to the 2018 NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. We're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where we start with the fifth national seeded Razorbacks of Arkansas taking on Oral Roberts out of the Summit League. And this is a double elimination format here this week. It's so important to win your first game, so the Razorbacks will try to make sure they don't allow the upset against Oral Roberts. Our second game today, the two-seed Southern Miss will take on number three-seed Dallas Baptist. And welcome, everybody. Doug Sherman along with former Dodgers farmhand John Gregory. So glad you could join us here this afternoon. Arkansas rarely loses here at Baum Stadium. In fact, they are 30-3 and three this season at home. So if they go the whole year only losing three times, it's hard to imagine a scenario where they're going to lose twice here this week. Yeah, you're right. And probably the most important thing is getting that game one victory. 93% of the time you win the first game, you go on to win the regional. So important to get off to a good start. And because of that, Blaine Knight, their ace, will take the mound today. Monday, he is likely to become a first-round draft pick. Today, trying to remain perfect. Only pitcher in Division One with a 10-0 record. He does not have to be perfect though today. Although he has been all year, he's going to get great run support here as he often does. So he's just got to be good today. He doesn't have to be perfect. On the flip side, Oral Roberts out of the Summit League. They have dominated that conference, but this is a whole different kettle of fish facing one of the best of the SEC. They will need a team performance to get it done today. Yeah, Nick Rourke, the leadoff guy, 54 runs scored this year. He's the guy that gets things started at the top. But Rotolo and Hernandez, those two guys over the last five games, 14 for 21, 11 RBI, 679 slug, and those guys can hit the ball. Summertime is certainly settled upon the Ozark Mountains here at Arkansas. Hot and steamy day. We've got the lineups. First pitch coming up next. Blaine Knight is a six foot three inch, 165, 170 pound right hander from Bryant, Arkansas. The only pitcher in all of Division I college baseball with a 10 0 record. And there's the scouting report, John. What we should expect out of night here this afternoon. Yeah, 91 95 on the fastball. Throws four pitches for strikes. Got a good cutter in the upper 80s. Slow breaking ball, but the guy, as I said at the top, does not have to be perfect today. He's got the experience on the mound, he's got the support in that offensive dugout. So he just needs to be good today, I think, against this Oral Roberts team, who are pretty good offensively. And for Oral Roberts, which comes in with a record of 38 and 18, the best team out of the Summit League. Not a lot of power in this lineup. Noah Cummings does a lot of damage in the middle. Young man from Alpine, California. He's the 2018 Summit League Player of the Year for the second year in a row. Oral Roberts, led by their head coach, Ryan Fulmer. Very familiar with coming here to Baum Stadium. They've done it before. As a matter of fact, three of the last four years, these two teams have faced each other in the opening game of the NCAA tournament. Arkansas has had the better of it, but the Golden Eagles don't feel overwhelmed by any stretch of the imagination here today. No, this is a team that has been here before. As you said, last year they played this Arkansas team twice, and since 1998 they've been here every year with the exception of 2012 through 14. So every year they're in a regional. Uh, this isn't too big of a moment for them. We'll see how they start off today. There's the defense for the Hogs. Kerstad Fletcher and Cole around the outfield left to right. Martin, a terrific glove at third base. Biggers at short, Shaddy second, Gates at first. Cook who is expected to be a potential first round draft pick on Monday behind the plate and his battery made on the hill. Lane Knight. Knight's second team all SEC. And he actually was expected possibly to be a second or third round pick last year. He had a lot of demands, let the major league teams know that it was going to take a lot to get him away from Fayetteville. He wanted to come back for this his junior year. And his NCAA tournament experience as a junior is underway with a strike. Well, I said before, he can locate four different pitches pretty good. That 90 to 95 mile an hour fastball, but his cutter is really good. He'll work up and down in the zone. Very confident on the mound, experienced leader for this club starting this first game of the regional. Nick Rohr, 385 batting average as a leadoff hitter, fouls one back. Behind on the count, 0 2. One of the good things about Blaine Knight is that he's got a very repeatable delivery. 
He's a guy who competes out there, will fight through trouble if he finds it. Nothing funky about the lineup as you talk about. Part of the opening weekend rotation for three straight years dating back to 2016. Work on the ground, backhanded by the shortstop Biggers. One away. So that's how the 2018 Fayetteville Regional gets underway. And that'll bring up Cal Hernandez for Oral Roberts, a redshirt junior from Compel, Texas. And he's coming off a tremendous performance in the conference tournament. Hernandez was the 2018 Summit League Tournament MVP, and he is somebody who could possibly find himself drafted next week. You see the numbers, pretty impressive. Yeah, and he's one of the guys we also mentioned over his last five games, even better, 6 of 15, scored seven runs. So, guy, two guys at the top of this lineup when you talk about Rourke and Hernandez that really set the table for a group of guys that find a way to drive them in. This Oral Roberts offense has been good all year. Numbers up and down the lineup, 300. Guys hitting 300, just two guys in the starting lineup, not above that number. John, I mentioned Oral Roberts has dominated the Summit League. All time in the conference tournament in the Summit, these Golden Eagles are 62 and 3. 62 and 3, that's incredible. <laughs> They've won 19 conference tournaments, so it's really the Golden Eagles and everybody else. And from that stat, you understand that they make it to the NCAA tournament pretty much every year. Sure, and they haven't had a whole lot of success when you're talking about winning regionals, but they get here every year, so that experience they have makes them a dangerous op uh, opponent. Hernandez behind on the count, one and two. But Oral Roberts has done well in recent years against Power 5 competition. They won 25 and lost 18 over the last three years. Two of those losses, as John mentioned, right here a year ago in the regionals to the Razorbacks. Knight misses down and in. Count evens two and two. But as you talked about, those games here last June were both close, both competitive ball games. Lost those two games to Arkansas by a total of four runs. Two-two pitch popped up left side. Casey Martin gives a look, but runs out of room. Well, Casey Martin, the uh, third baseman for the Razorbacks, is a tremendous young player. 5'11 freshman from Lone Oak, Arkansas. And you and I both yesterday during batting practice, immediately our eyes went to the third baseman, how he handles himself, carries himself out there. Yeah, he just does not look like a freshman. When you see him for the first time, you say, how does this guy have so much power? And you see him swing the bat in the cage. You see him fielding the ball out there. He was a shortstop second baseman in high school, so he's really learning the position of third base all year. But now with the whole year under his belt in the SEC, this guy's become very good defensively but he's so much better on the offensive side. That's what he brings to this team. Yeah, three home runs last week at Hoover. Met at the uh, SEC tournament, made the all-tournament team. Second team, all-SEC, and uh, it's quite a one-two punch Arkansas has from its freshmen, along with Heston Kerstad, who are putting their names in the Razorbacks record books. Again, the 2-2 pitch. And again, Hernandez fouls it away. Well, Cal Hernandez comes from a baseball family. His father, Tommy, played three years at Texas Tech back in the mid-'80s. And Tommy went on to sign with the Texas Rangers, played in the minor leagues for Texas. And Cal would love to follow suit. As mentioned, he could hear his name in next week's Major League Draft. He does have one year of college eligibility remaining as a redshirt junior. Lifts it to center field. Easy play for Dominic Fletcher, and there are two away. So as mentioned, it is a hot and steamy afternoon here in Fayetteville. The breeze is blowing in from right field. Not quite as stiff a breeze as we saw during brat batting practice yesterday, John, but it is a factor. Now we asked the question yesterday, does it normally blow in from right field like this? They said early in the year it does, then it starts blowing out to left, which this Arkansas team likes as many home runs as they've hit. And they said they'll even change the lineup a little bit based off of what, that wind coming in from right field. But 
So much home run, so much home run power for this Razorback offense. Really, wind doesn't keep anything in this ballpark. Called strike against Noah Cummings, the designated hitter with a 323 batting average. Blaine Knight, fourth in the SEC right now with a, an ERA of 2.77. Misses off the plate, one and one. Got a good look at those flags out in right field, just kind of a steady breeze in, but warm day like this today down on the field before the ball game, boy, mm. you know, really, really warm. So the ball's still going to fly out of this ballpark. And it is an all natural grass surface here at Baum Stadium. Easy comebacker fielded by Knight. And it's a 1-2-3, top of the first. No score as we head to the bottom half of the first. Razorbacks coming up with Cole Martin and Kirsten. Back at Fanville, Arkansas coming up for its first licks of the 2018 NCAA Baseball Regionals. And they will be facing Justin McGregor, a 6-1 senior right-hander for Oral Roberts out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. First team all summit conference each of the last two years. Last year he was perfect, John, 9-0, and was their Friday night guy. For the most part this year he was a Saturday guy, but kind of interchangeable between him and Miguel Osua, who we will presumably see in game two for Oral Roberts. Yeah, any one of those three guys could have got the start today, and you could see him 88 to 89, uh, on 89 to 91. He'll touch 93. He's got a pretty good cutter as well, just like. Uh, just like uh, Knight on the other side, and uh, good breaking ball, and him, he's got a great changeup as well. Here's the lineup he's facing. One of the most potent in the entire country, Cole, Shaddy, and Kerstad to get things started here in the bottom half of the first. And Eric Cole, the junior from South Lake, Texas, takes a pitch outside. Two balls and no strikes. McGregor, a guy with some experience against this Arkansas team. He's the guy that started the game last year in the elimination game and went four innings in that ball game, had really good success, and then kind of lost it at the end. Ended up going four and a third, gave up seven hits and three earned runs in that ball game. So he's been in this moment before. 2-1 pitch. Well, Cole is quite a table setter. 518 is the batting average as a leadoff hitter. Second team all SEC. He's a switch hitter and he has really blossomed this year. On the ground to second. Backhanded by Nick Rourke and there's one away. Now batting for the Razorbacks. The third baseman number 15, Casey Martin. And there's the Oral Roberts defense. Pace, Rotola, McCutcheon in the outfield. Hernandez, Smith, Rourke, and Henson on the infield. Riley Kaiser behind the plate. And Justin McGregor with his first pitch to Casey Martin missing upstairs. Martin at 343, 13 home runs to lead the Razorbacks. 43 RBIs, which is second on the team. And uh, we talked about him a little bit in the top half of the inning. What a wonderful freshman season he has had. Wow, he's just, uh, he, when you look at his numbers, I mean, they really haven't been matched from that side of it. As we see the size, 5'11", but this guy can really turn on it. Those home runs that he hit in the SEC tournament, they were huge. The bomb he hit down the left field line. There's the drive with the gap in left center. One hop by Andrew Pace, and it's a double with one out here on the first. And he continues to swing a hot bat here, gets a play, uh, ball that he can drive to left center field. Watch him turn on it. Just quick, quick hands through that zone. Ball was up. If McGregor's going to have success, he's going to have to work down in the zone against these guys. You don't want to give him the ability to lift the ball out of the ballpark. Martin's not the biggest guy, 5'11", 175. But as the folks who watched the Lone Oak Jackrabbits the last few years, small town, here in Arkansas, they can attest there is some lightning in that bat of Casey Martin who leads at second. Kerstad, first pitch swinging. He is retired four to three. Martin moves to third. So a big second out registered by McGregor. That'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Luke Bonfield. 
Bonfield. Bonfield, one of the seniors on this Arkansas roster from Skillman, New Jersey. He wasn't used much as a freshman, but he was a part of the College World Series team in 2015 that, of course, was headlined by Andrew Benintendi. And he would love nothing more than to bookend his college career with another trip to Omaha. Yeah, he broke his ankle the first day of fall camp his freshman year, so only had seven RBIs, about a 177, but ever since then, as that ankle's gotten better, really, it's kind of forced him into that DH role where didn't have a whole lot of speed before that. Not a great athlete, but boy, he can hit the. Routine grounder to short. Harrison Smith with the play. And Justin McGregor escapes trouble. No score as we head to the second here in Fayetteville. College baseball regionals always have a little bit of fun and excitement. It always gets hot. Summertime has arrived here in Arkansas. We've got Dallas Baptist and Southern Miss coming up next. As we are underway with Arkansas and Oral Roberts. And this is how important it is. If you are the host for a regional, then on to the super regionals, you've got a tremendous advantage. But John Gregory, I ask you, do those numbers reflect the fact that you are benefiting from being on your home field, or is it just simply you're the better team, therefore you have home field, you'd win whether you were home or away or not? Yeah, great question. I think it's a combination of both. You look around this stadium today on a 95, what feels like a 100-degree day out there, all this home support that you get, that can't do nothing but help you. And then, of course, you're the higher seed. You are expected to win, and that's why you earn that spot. So I think it's a combination of both. Well, we have three teams out of the four here in Fayetteville this week who are in the top 40 nationally in RPI. Oral Roberts is the one outside that number. They're about 130, somewhere in there, so they are the decided underdog. But if not Arkansas, who else out of Dallas Baptist or the other teams that we have here do you think will give Arkansas the greatest trouble? Yeah, well, it, it's tough to say. I mean, this this team right here gave them a hard time last year although Arkansas won two of those games those were very close ball games and you've got a Southern Miss team here today that can really hit the ball all over the ballpark they've got a great pitcher um, that's tops in the nation in his whip walks and hits an innings pitch I mean there's a lot of good individual players and guys on the mound that can win one game for you Blaine Knight facing Spencer Henson to begin the second inning Henson's an interesting story in that a year ago for Ryan Fulmer, he was used basically as a relief pitcher. But he has put together a tremendous year at the plate. They list him at 6'2", uh, 240 pounds from Pryor, Arkansas. Off the end of the bat. Coming on from left field to make the running catch is Kerstad. And there's one away. And we'll talk more about Henson as he gets another at bat in this ball game. But you said just used basically as a reliever last year, came in this year, hitting, leading the team in hits and home runs and RBI. This guy's just done it all for this team offensively. And they are certainly facing a stern test in Blaine Knight. Now, I mentioned off the top that uh, the Arkansas right-hander is projected as a possible first-round pick on Monday in the Major League Baseball draft. And with that, you might think, well, he'd be first team all conference. But in a conference as loaded as the SEC is, you can understand why he's second team all conference because Auburn's Casey Mize is the presumed number one overall pick. And then you've got Florida's Brady Singer projected by Keith Law in his latest mock draft to go fourth overall. So your first round pick, yes, but you're no better <laughs> than maybe third best in your conference. Yeah, 1A, B, and C, I think. I don't know how you move him up and down. But what makes him really good is the adjustments that he makes during the game. I think that's what – he's a hardworking guy, first of all, but the adjustments that he can make during the game, whether it's moving it in, down, up, up and down in the zone, he can just locate so well. And that confidence that he has out there, that his guys behind him that are going to play well, that's what makes him so good. And there's Keith Law's latest mock draft, which just came out yesterday. 
And it is loaded with players you can watch on the ESPN networks here this week in the NCAA regionals. That ball just foul. So says first base umpire Tim Rosso. Yeah, all sorts of talent. And uh, they say that Casey Mize is probably the guy who is most major league ready right now. So whoever drafts him, and of course the Detroit Tigers hold the number one overall pick. Tigers aren't going to be playing in the postseason, but uh, there is a lot of thought that he could be in the major leagues perhaps as soon as later this summer. I was struck in uh, meeting Blaine Knight yesterday. I mean, they list him at 165 pounds, and he mm -hmm. is not that big. I mean, there are concerns about his size, and, and certainly as you get a little bit older, you'll put on weight and some good weight. But, uh, you know, other than a guy like Pedro Martinez, who was very slight, how do you generate the power that he does without a real big frame? Well, I Pace, think Pace flies out to Fletcher in center. I think it's kind of what you talked about. It's that repeatable motion that he has on the mound, the ability to kind of repeat that. He gets in a good slot, good arm slot, and it's kind of behind, drops that leg to the ground, and really he can just generate a whole lot of power. There's a lot of guys that can do it without having to be six foot four, six five, and 200 pounds. This is a guy that's got good quick f fiber in him as far as twitch, fast twitch, and the ability to throw strikes. But, you know, Again, I go back to it. There's a lot of guys throwing 90 to 95 now, but location and how he controls his pitches. Nick Rotola with the bunt. Barehanded by Martin, and he throws it away. Nice backup by the right fielder, Eric Cole, to keep Rotola at first base. We mentioned Rotola in his last five games. He's... Eight for 16 in those games and scored five runs. Two outs here. He drops a bunt down, kind of maybe fooled Casey Martin down at third base. I don't think anybody was thinking about it. He made a nice play on it, but uh, really re no chance to get him as he was heading down that first base line. And that is a bunt single for Rotola. No error since he did not advance. So a two-out base runner. And that'll bring up the catcher, Riley Kaiser. And we'll see Blaine Knight work out of the stretch for the first time. And Arkansas has been careful with Blaine Knight. You know, he's taken the last couple of summers off. He was limited in fall ball this past year. Trying to make sure he was at his peak here in the spring for the Razorbacks. And as I mentioned earlier, he was drafted last year. He was a draft-eligible sophomore and went in the 29th round of the Rangers. But based on ability, he would have gone a lot higher than that. But he made it very clear to the, the Major League teams that were interested that it was going to take more money than they were willing to give him at that point. And with guys like Blaine Knight, you've got to try and get what you can get when you've got leverage. So when you've still got two years left of college eligibility, and right now he's got one year left, you've got some leverage against these professional teams. Sure, and we heard that from a couple guys that we talked with this week. They knew they had that leverage and the ability to do that. So, And they want to come back. They knew he was going to he, he was going to have a good ball club coming back to with a chance to go to the World Series and possibly win it. So why not come back and uh, experience this? This is only a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So... He's going to have baseball in front of him in years to go, but uh, why not come back and try to play it with these guys that you've been together with now for a few years? Well, the Razorbacks have been to Omaha eight times in their history, but have never won at all. This team is the highest national seed ever in Arkansas baseball history is the five national seeds. So, again, why not come back? You've got as good a chance as anybody. Of course, Florida is considered the number one and has been right along. Stanford number two, but... You could make a case that this Arkansas team has as good a shot as anybody to win this year's national championship. Three balls and a strike. Well, Florida State and Coach Martin still looking for its first championship. And Arkansas on that list as well. Most trips to Omaha without winning a championship, and they would love to get their name off that list in the coming weeks. That's just a head-scratching number for Florida State, isn't it? Yeah. 22 
It's just an amazing number, you would think. Swing and a miss. Count goes full. I heard Coach Martin earlier this week talking about his Seminoles and their chances of getting back to Omaha again this year. Of course, earlier this year, he became the all-time winningest head coach in college baseball history, passing Augie Garrido. But the one thing missing on his wonderful resume is a national title. And he said, I'd be lying to you if it didn't mean something. Sure. Of course it does. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But this could be the year for the Seminoles, could be for the Razorbacks. Arkansas first baseman Jared Gates playing behind the runner at first Nick Rotola and the payoff pitch Low and away. Did you see anything different out of the stretch from Blaine Knight? No I mean you're taking a look at him out there. You know, he's gonna get a visit to the mound now by Grant Cook there just to set him down a bit One thing he wants to do today is be efficient out on the mound with that weather out there He's got 30 total pitches now and you mentioned you know, the amount of throwing that he had coming into this year, but over the last six appearances, he's gone at least six innings in all of those. So, been a lot of work, not more than seven, but has thrown six innings in all of those appearances. Here in the second, he retired Henson and Pace on flyouts, but then a bunt single by Rotola and a walk to Kaiser has Oral Roberts threatening in the top of the second. Blaine Knight out of the stretch. Gets a high fly ball to left. Kerstad settles under it. And that retires the side. No runs, one hit, two men left aboard. After one and a half, still scoreless in Fayetteville. Welcome back to the 2018 NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. With John Gregory, I'm Doug Sherman here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. On a beautiful afternoon as the Razorbacks take on the Golden Eagles of Oral Roberts. And these two teams separated by just about two hours. Oral Roberts took the bus ride down yesterday afternoon from Tulsa. And they have faced each other an awful lot of times. And as we talked about, John, they are familiar foes in the postseason. Yeah, it's just we mentioned already two, two times that you know, last year the ball games they've had pretty close games and they've seen each other an awful lot throughout the years. I think that's what makes a team like Oral Roberts a little bit more dangerous for this Razorback team because of the experience they have and recognition of the ballpark and being here before. Dominic Fletcher leading off the bottom of the second flies out to pace and left one away. Well, John, we have our first final scores from the 2018 NCAA baseball tournament. Games have been won by an SEC team and in a Pac-12 team. You got Vanderbilt shutting out St. John's 2-0 in the Clemson Regional. And then Washington, one of the last teams into the field and uh, a team that many people thought, well, Kentucky should have been in instead of mm -hmm. UW, but uh, UW gets in and beats UConn in the Conway, South Carolina Regional to get things underway. 7-1 was that final score. And at this time of year, we're not surprised by seeing a little bit of weather. Pretty much every regional <laughs> around, all 16 regionals going to run into some weather at some point or another And uh, in Oxford, Mississippi, down at Ole Miss, Missouri State, and Tennessee Tech waiting out a weather delay. And the forecast here in Fayetteville for the next few days, hot and steamy. They say we're going to have a chance for some uh, thunderstorms tomorrow, I believe. But uh, not too bad considering. Hey, if we can get through tomorrow, then it's looking really pleasant for Sunday. Really going to be a big drop in temperature and humidity. So we'll take a little bit of rain tomorrow as long as it's in between games, maybe. I don't want to slow anything down. This ballpark and these fans experienced quite a bit of that last year. Carson Shaddy fouls it back and out of play. Count one and two against the right-hander Justin McGregor. Lots of action already underway on this first day of the tournament. And you can keep track of it all on the bases loaded channel and I'm telling you there's no better thing that you and I love college baseball to be able to watch and track all these games. How about Oklahoma at Mississippi State as Shaddy goes down on strikes. Top of the seventh inning at Duty Noble it's 16 to 10 Sooners. 
So the ball is flying there in Starkville. One upset possible. Troy leads Duke 5 nothing in the top of the fourth inning. Yep. I really don't think that's much of an upset so much as Troy out of the Sun Belt Conference. Pretty good team. They get at-large bid with Coastal Carolina winning the Sun Belt. They ended up getting in. And I think with one of the fastest teams in the country, they're really a dangerous team in a region. Here's Jared Gates, number three for the Razorbacks. Senior from Wichita, Kansas. He's ahead in the count 2-0. Well, if you like the uniforms that uh, the Razorbacks are wearing today, you better get used to it because uh, <laughs> their alternate uniforms got ruined a couple of weeks ago on a snafu at Georgia, apparently. Uh, somebody didn't know you should uh, not mix reds and whites in the laundry. <laughs> and so this is the only home uni they've got. They're sharp. They're classic looking. Oh, yeah. I like them. But uh, they are down just a bit. And going next level, how about the fact that uh, Oral Roberts is wearing the blue top and the gray pants, they are 6-8 and eight this year wearing this combination. So now, John Gregory, if you were a <laughs> captain, would you allow your team to wear that combination knowing you have a losing record this year? Well, no, of course not. No, I, I would uh, want that changed up a bit. But fortunately for Arkansas, they're wearing these whites out here on a hot day like this. Think how warm it is right now for Oral Roberts out there with those dark blue jerseys on. So I think it makes a difference on a day like this. You think the guy at Georgia, guy or gal down at Georgia, are looking for a job right now? Well, <laughs> or maybe a promotion. <laughs> you possibly. think it was an accident? Either side you look at, yeah, well. I don't know. It team, seems to me that Georgia has some red in them, so they would know that that is not a good combination to You mix. would think. You would think. Here's the hometown catcher, Grant Cook, junior from right here in Fayetteville. Played his high school ball just up the road. And he is somebody who might find his way into the first round of the Major League Baseball draft on Monday. We had a very interesting conversation with him during batting practice yesterday. We'll talk much more about that as the weekend continues. Cook retired on a pop-up. And that'll do it. In the second, we head to the third. No score. Golden Eagles and the Razorbacks. Oral Roberts, the defending champ in the Summit League, led by their head coach, Ryan Fulmer, who has actually won Coach of the Year in that conference for the last four years. And they once again this year swept all the major awards in the Summit. Yeah, and I think that's a trend for all four of these teams when you look at the players and how they've represented their teams and leagues. All four of these teams having guys, whether they're freshman of the year, player of the year, pitcher of the year, Newcomer, I mean, you just name it. All four of these teams in this region have guys that are uh, have filled all of those spots. Well, as the four seed here in Fayetteville, Oral Roberts might have thought that it would have played in the night game. However, Arkansas has its choice whether they want to play this first game in the afternoon or at night. And the Razorbacks and their head coach Dave Van Horn decided to take the afternoon game and. There are different strategies to that. And, John, what do you think about the Hogs taking this first game here in this regional? Yeah, I think it's a good decision. And uh, Dave Van Horn decided to do that because he wants his team to get a little bit more rest for the next day. And I think the trend is going that way or moving that way. Of course, a lot of teams will select to play that night game on Friday so they can get their attendance here. But if you look around, you can understand why he can still play this and get the attendance. Harrison Smith retired on the pop-up. Yeah, it doesn't matter where uh, or when you play the games, the Razorbacks fans are coming out. It is a blistering hot day, and uh, there is barely an empty seat here in this beautiful ballpark that's just over 20 years old, Baum Stadium. You know, the thing about it, too, if there is an empty seat, most of the people are standing under the concourse there. There are fans back there, and there's as many, there are many people standing back underneath watching this game as there is out sitting, it seems like, in the stands. Here's a good look at it. Nick Rourke 
looks at a strike. One of the other pieces of strategy that each coach, especially for the uh, the one seeds, but less so for the two and the three seeds, when do you pitch your ace? Do you throw him at the four seed or do you hold him? It's so like Auburn's playing Northeastern right now, and the Tigers are not pitching Casey Mize, who actually threw a no-hitter during the regular season against the same Northeastern team. They're saving him for a presumably tougher opponent. Here, Arkansas is putting its best foot forward against Oral Roberts this afternoon. Yeah, well, again, it's always ask you ask the coach after the game or the fans or anything else, was it a good decision or bad? You lose with not your number one guy going on opening game, yeah, then they're going to look back and say, well, we should have went with him. So really, that's a question that's been going on forever and how you should do it. But it's really a feel, or maybe it really goes back to a tournament and how a guy pitched in that tournament, how many innings they went, if they want to give him one extra day, or if they think they're going to be able to bring him back on an if-necessary game on Monday, maybe to work out of the bullpen. Right. I mean, the hope here in Arkansas is that Blaine Knight pitches once. That's mm -hmm. here this afternoon. We don't see him again the rest of the week. But the reality is between weather delays and upsets, if it does extend to Sunday or Monday by pitching him here on Friday afternoon as opposed to Friday night or as opposed to Saturday, he's got a little more rest in case you need to turn him around for an inning of relief here or there. He misses down and inside to Nick Rourke. And the count is two and two. And there's a look at the terrific catcher, Grant Cook, who is, as far as we can tell, the only catcher in the SEC calling his own game. In college baseball today, most every pitch is called from the bench, either by a head coach or a pitching coach. But the Arkansas coaching staff entrusts this young man so much that he calls his own game. And, it's a, and, and that is a big trust, too, when you talk about that. Work gets jammed. Cole, easy catch for out number two. You know, in the SEC this year, too, having the earpiece in the catcher's ear, it's so much easier for these coaches to make the decision and make those calls. No doubt about it, John. Hey, the ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, Longhorn Network, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. And all coverage is available on the ESPN app. I was saying you know, with the earpiece in it makes it a so much easier for coaches to you know, get that signal into the catcher or just be able to verbally tell them what to do. But again, electing not to do that, that shows the pride that this catcher has and, and what he does with his pitching staff. And the guy in the mound, Blaine Knight, you asked him, does he ever shake you off? No, he never shakes him off because that's how much he trusts his catcher. And the earpiece is something only used in SEC play. And so for the NCAA tournament, the Razorbacks do not have the earpiece, but uh, they are as accustomed to not having that communication. You can see on his left forearm there, he has the different signs and signals and numbers and information he was going to need there in lieu of having the earpiece. Swing and a miss. Cal Hernandez over top of the breaking pitch. It's one and two. Really nice breaking ball by Knight that time. We've seen a lot of fastballs, not a whole lot of breaking balls for him for the, through the first 41 pitches. You know, you get through that lineup the first time, throwing that fastball, then you give him a little bit of a def, different look that second time at the plate. Well, Knight features a mid-90s fastball, the curve, the change. Didn't get the call there to the chagrin of the folks here at Baum Stadium. Now Cook was making his way to the dugout. Took a step and a half. <laughs> Home plate umpire Joe Burleson back there, probably not happy with that. The 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. First strike out of the game for Blaine Knight, who has Oral Roberts scoreless through three. First pitch at the bottom of the third inning, misses low and outside to Jax Biggers. 9-1-2 in the order due up against Justin McGregor as Arkansas looks to get on the board first against Oral Roberts. So far, Justin McGregor has been good. He's allowed only the one double to Casey Martin. He also walked a batter last inning. 
But by and large, this potent Arkansas offense has not been able to get going. No, McGregor, just the same start he had last year against this team in the elimination game. In that game last year, first four innings, set down 10 of the first 12 hitters in that game, was not threatened at all, just a triple in that game, not able to score. It was the fifth inning where Arkansas was able to get to him. Biggers takes it low. You may notice his left index finger on uh, the bat there for Biggers. It's sticking out. And he's had to jerry-rig both his batting glove and his shortstop glove because of a finger injury that really doesn't hamper him, but he's not quite 100% right. No, he was injured bunting the ball and fractured the end of the figure. Actually had some stitches in there, but the one thing he does feel comfortable is swinging the bat a little bit is more comfortable for him than fielding when we were talking to him yesterday about it. Didn't know he had the stitches in there, but uh, again, doesn't affect him at the plate so much. Matter of fact, his first game back after that injury and Coach Van Hort wanted him to just get some swings in the SEC tournament. Well, he ended up getting two hits in that ball game, so really didn't affect him a whole lot. Yeah, he's got four stitches in there. Ground ball right side, and it sneaks past the glove of Nick Rourke. Lead off single, and the Razorbacks get the bottom of the third off to a good start. Well, anytime you can get your leadoff guy, especially the number nine hole hitter, to get on first base with a base hit there, and you can see that finger as he's taken off that glove. Again, doesn't affect him so much at the plate as compared to what it does fielding. But to get that leadoff guy on to start with your top of the top of the lineup right now, that's a big lift for this Razorbacks offense. And I'm a little bit surprised he doesn't go with the oven mitt type of protection we see for that left hand when he's running the bases. But that tells me perhaps that he does not slide head first. Hopefully he doesn't. And that's an injury that it hap had it happened to be his right index finger, he wouldn't be able to play. But because it's his non-throwing hand, he's able to stay in there and be productive for the Razorbacks. Eric Cole at the plate. He grounded out in the first inning. Batting average stands at 323 on the year. Second team all SEC. He had no home runs as a freshman. Actually, his first career home run came on an inside the park job last year against Miami of Ohio. But his power numbers have really blossomed this year. 12 home runs. So you go from 0 to 12 in a couple of years, and he's turned himself into a real pro prospect. Yeah, no question about it. Ben Attendee used to be here. Kind of the same thing. Production powers go up over time. Strength is increased, and you can see the same things happen for Cole. Pace with the catch, one away. Biggers back to first. I'm going to bring up Casey Martin, the one man who has really barreled up Justin McGregor so far this afternoon. He lays to double to the gap in left center his first time up. Saw McGregor on the mound picking up that rosin bag. Humid, humid day out there. That thing, bag of rosin may be empty by the time this thing's over. Strike called against Martin. Well, with one more home run, Casey Martin will become the most prolific home run hitter among freshmen in Razorbacks history. He's currently tied with Zach Cox, who back in 2009 hit 13 home runs. That won't leave the park. Lifts it a mile high to left. Another easy chance for pace. Two away. You can see the power in his swing. Now he barely got that, seemed like off the end of the bat, just kind of missed it. He's got that swing through his bat path, has that lift to it that every time he makes contact, you think it has an opportunity to get out of the park. Here's Heston Kerstad from Amarillo, Texas, the other freshman in this terrific one-two punch of rookies, Martin and Kerstad. And with that stiff wind blowing in yesterday during batting practice, this young man big enough, strong enough to hit the ball through that wind. We've got a breeze blowing in from right today. Not quite as strong, but he certainly can leave the yard. 11 home runs this year to go along with the 335 batting average. 
And you mentioned the postseason awards, freshman of the year, first in school history. Another freshman of the year, first in school history, second team all SEC. And he has done some good things against some of the top pitching in the SEC this year. High fly, deep left field, pace back, he runs out of room, and it is gone! A two-run shot off the bat of Heston Kerstad. Now you mentioned the power to right field and his ability to drive it out and have pull power. Well, he's got the ability to hit it to all fields. Wind slightly blowing in from right field, kind of right to left, and he just gets great extension on this. Knew it had an opportunity. You could see him going down that first baseline. He was watching it, watching it, and these fans thought it had an opportunity too. They got loud, and when this thing lands in the bullpen, they explode, and Kirstead explodes to help the Razorbacks out to a 2-0 lead. 12th home run of the year, 49 RBIs. That'll bring up Luke Bonfield. Well, we enjoyed talking to Heston Kerstad yesterday. I think he was kind of uh, holding back while we were chatting to start, and then I asked him, <laughs> what's been the best part of... Uh, your freshman experience as a college student here at Arkansas. And he kind of hemmed and hawed, and, and you and I understood what he probably was thinking but didn't want to say to a couple of guys he just met. He said, you can say it, it's the girls. Of course it is. And so then uh, we had a nice chat after that. Asked him about facing the uh, Casey Mises and Brady Singers of the world, and uh, he sheepishly said, I kind of own Brady Singer. <laughs> he did have a good game against the Gators ace, but uh, yeah. he talked about the fact that facing Casey Mize, like, boy, it's a whole different experience than I ever saw in high school. Never seen anybody be able to do things that Casey Mize can do. Yeah, kind of bowed out the chest a little bit in that bragging, but he did say that every Friday night he faces a guy that has the potential one day to be in the big leagues. So that's what makes it unique about the Southeastern Conference. I said, you know, what's the difference that you had before, you know, before conference play and then it elevated to the SEC, just, and that's the first thing he said. It's Friday night starters. He said it's amazing the guys that you have to face when you're in this league. Yeah, facing an 88-mile-an-hour splitter from Casey Mize. You don't get that elsewhere. Bonfield looks at a ball. And Kerstad visited Oklahoma as well as Arkansas, but committed right away after Coach Van Horn went to Texas to see Kerstad play in person back in the summer of 2015. There are a lot of things about coming to Fayetteville that were appealing to him. Ground ball right side. Nice stop by Rourke, and he gets the out at first. Arkansas gets on the board with a two-run shot by Kerstad. When we come back, we'll be joined by the head coach of the Hogs, Dave Van Horn. 2-0 Arkansas as we head to the top of the fourth inning and pleased to be joined by the 16th year head coach of the Razorbacks, Dave Van Horn. And coach, what have you seen so far out of your ace right-hander, Blaine Knight, keeping Oral Roberts off the board so far? Well, they're doing a good job uh, laying off some borderline pitches, but I think Blaine has been able to pitch backwards a little bit, throw small speed uh, type pitches, cutters, and uh, change-ups, and, uh, you know, it counts when he's, he's behind a little bit. He's doing a good job. Coach, offensively, your two freshmen have had some really good swings on it today. Question is, you know, can these guys handle big moment? They've done it all year. They certainly have today. Yeah, we, uh, we've been very fortunate with those two guys. They're a little uh, little more advanced than a lot of freshmen, uh, at least at the plate. And they've come up with a lot of big hits for us this year. All right, thank you, Coach. Okay, thanks. And indeed, Casey Martin with the double in the first inning and then the big two-run homer in the third by Heston Kerstad. And let's see how the Golden Eagles will respond here in the top of the fourth against Blaine Knight. And if you can explain, John, you, you pitched professionally in the minor leagues for the L.A. Dodgers. What exactly is it when he's talking about pitching backwards? Well, that's, you know, most times you'll find guys trying to get ahead with guys, then throw in breaking balls. But you know, you'll see 83 mile an hour breaking ball right there to start a hitter off. Sometimes pitching ahead, you know, pitching behind or pitching ahead of somebody really dictates what's going on you know, based off of the account. But what he's doing is he's dictating out on the mound by pitching backwards. Well, they say his curveball is his fourth pitch. There it was right there. He doesn't have as good a command at that. But uh, he's got a, uh, a really, 
really good cutter, a mid-80s cutter that is kind of an out pitch for him. Yeah, I, you know, I called it off-speed. That cutter is kind of a slurve, slider type thing, but cutter. But mid-80s, he throws that. You know, when you compare that to a mid-90 fastball, that's that off-speed. So still throws it. Looks like a fastball coming out of his hand, whether he throws the breaking ball, the fastball, changeup, or that splitter. They all look the same as they come out of the hand, and that's what makes it hard to recognize as a hitter. Noah Cummings way out in front of the last pitch, and he finds himself behind in the count one and two. Cummings 0 for 1 today, retired on a comebacker in the first. The designated hitter for Oral Roberts. Looking for their 39th win of the year, but uh, up against the Arkansas Razorbacks' best, who picks up his second straight strikeout. One away here in the fourth. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Talking about that cutter, that was a nice one that he threw last time to get the strikeout. It was outside corner, great location out there, 83 miles an hour. Really kind of becomes an untouchable pitch for that right-handed hitter that's got two strikes. Spencer Henson lifts one to right. Shaddy goes out, gives way to Cole. Very quickly, two men away here in the fourth. And I think so important for this Arkansas defense now to get off the field. Blaine Knight, if anyone knows how important it is to put up a zero after your guys put up some numbers. So I think it's the most important inning to get a zero on the scoreboard once your team scores a couple runs. It, just motivation for them to get back in the dugout and see if they can't get some more on the board. Two away for Andrew Pace. And the junior college transfer takes a strike. Young man from Beaumont, Texas, who spent the last two years with the Panola College Ponies. After having played his high school ball at Monsignor Kelly. Pace gets hit by the pitch. After retiring six men in a row, Blaine Knight allows a two-out base runner. And that'll bring up Nick Rotola, the number six hitter. Trying to work inside to the left-handed hitter, it looks like, that time, and that ball got away from him. Kind of look. Finally, Blaine Knight was kind of looking down at his finger when he had his back turned really to the dugout. And I don't think there, I don't see anything. I don't think anything's wrong right now, but maybe something to just keep an eye on. See him fidgeting right there with his fingers. That may be something he does all the time. Hit squarely to center, but right at Dominic Fletcher. No runs, one man left. When we come back, we will have a conversation with the Golden Eagles head coach, Ryan Fulmer. The Women's College World Series Finals begin Monday on ESPN. The Detroit Grand Prix, today at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Razorbacks 2, Golden Eagles nothing as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Joined now by the Summit League Coach of the Year, Ryan Fulmer for Oral Roberts and Coach your starting pitcher, Justin McGregor, other than the two-run homer he gave up last half, has looked pretty good so far today. Yeah, he hasn't made many mistakes. He made one to the <laughs> to the wrong guy. Uh, but, yeah, I like what he's doing out there right now. He's competing. He's, uh, he's throwing strikes, giving us a chance. Offensively, Coach, you're facing Blaine Knight out there. What's your message to your team as they get through this lineup now the second time? Well, we're going to have to make uh, we're going to have to make a couple swings with some guys on base. Uh, he, he's good, man. He, he can really command it to both sides with a fastball. Uh, he's throwing his breaking ball for strikes, gotten the change over a couple times against a couple left-hand hitters. So we're going to have to make some big swings at some point. All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. There's the aforementioned Justin McGregor, number 10 in blue on the mound for Oral Roberts University from Tulsa, Oklahoma, just a couple hours away from here. Very familiar opponent. And it's something that Coach Fulmer has tried to cultivate over the years to get a non-league rivalry, and especially when you play in a league like the Summit League. Dominic Fletcher retired 4-3. to three. 
you have to bolster, if you want your RPI to be at least decent, you have to bolster your non-conference schedule by playing the Arkansas of the world when you can get them. Yeah, absolutely you have to do it because even if you're beating teams in the conference, because their RPI is so low, it's not helping you in those, even if you're winning on the road. So what they have to do is they have to schedule up and do that. And that's, you know, it's a challenge for the players. That's what they want to do anyway. That's why you elect to go to a school like that, because you know you're going to play that schedule. You know you're going to have an opportunity to play in the postseason. And that's why they can recruit so many of the good players that they do. And, you know, Oral Roberts is not your prototypical four seed in the regional round. A lot of times you get teams that are overmatched and don't have any professional prospects that's not that's not the case with oral roberts this is a program that went to the college world series in 1978 they came here to the fayetteville regional in 2006 and swept their way onto the super regionals they beat arkansas once and beat oklahoma state twice you know they've got guys currently in the big leagues they had the number one overall draft pick in the 1981 major league draft mike moore the right-hander for the mariners so Oral Roberts is a program that has had a lot of talent come through and turned out a lot of major leaguers. One odd walk to Carson Shaddy. That'll bring up Jared Gates. That's the second walk issued by McGregor. You mentioned playing those teams and the confidence they had. The two games that Oral Roberts dropped last year to Arkansas here by a combined four runs. So they were in those ball games, and I think that comes back to playing those teams earlier in the year and the confidence that they have and beating some of those teams early in the season. Well, this is the 28th time Oral Roberts has made it to the regional round. Second straight here, here at Baum Stadium. And the man on the mound here was their Friday starter last year. Justin McGregor, first team all summit each of the last two years. He went 9 0 last year with a 299 ERA. 6 1 this year, 256 ERA coming in. Breaking ball misses low. One ball, one strike. Just one strikeout on the day, and he's a guy that actually leads the team 33 strikeouts looking. So. You know, any indication when you're leading your team and strikeouts looking, that means you have some pretty good stuff that hitters lay off. They don't see or don't recognize, and you fool a lot of guys. Has not been able to fool this Arkansas team early in this ball game yet as far as strikeouts go. Here's a good look at Jared Gates. Arkansas first baseman. Two balls and a strike. Gates is out of Northwest High School in Wichita. Played a couple of years at Iowa Western Community College before transferring here to Fayetteville. Runner goes, bouncing ball right side. Big hop for Rourke, and he gets the out at first base. Moving on to second is Shaddy. Rourke had to go a long way to make that play, but as you said, kind of an easy hop to him. Big hop, made it easy play for him to make the out at first base and Shaddy moving on it easily gets the second base. And here comes Grant Cook. Young man who has uh, mentioned grew up here in Fayetteville had season tickets he and his family came to watch Razorbacks games every chance they could and uh, he said he's probably got about 50 family and friends sitting behind the third base dugout and down the third base line here today. He's very well aware of the fact that it's likely his final go-round as a Razorback. He's going to go early in the uh, Major League Draft next week. And you got to compartmentalize it this time of year and focus on the task at hand. And he seemed to have it in a pretty good balance yesterday when we chatted about that. Yeah, I think this entire team does. There's so many guys that are going to have an opportunity to play pro ball. But I really, truly believe the focus of this team is getting to the World Series and not only getting there, but an opportunity to win it, I think. And the big le the leadership from that comes from a guy like this behind the plate that calls his own pitches, has been here, that's committed to this program ever since day one. And guys follow leaders like that and he's one of those type of leaders well he had a monster summer of 2017 with the u.s collegiate national team and that really put him on the uh, 
map with pro scouts as he falls behind in the count 0-2. They list him at 6 feet 195. He won an Arkansas State Championship in 2013 as a high school sophomore at Fayetteville High, just up the road. And he uh, has been able to tap into the Razorbacks alumni network to really round out his game. Tom Pagnazzi was a great catcher at Arkansas, played several years in the major leagues, and Tom Pagnazzi has served as somewhat of a catching mentor for Grant Cook. And everybody needs one, and why not? That, along with his dad, and you know, just the history that he's had growing up and the ability to be taught by some pretty good guys. And that's why a guy like that can step in early in his career and kind of command a pitching staff and help them mature. Another line drive foul. Count holds one and two. Well, Cook made the all SEC defensive team this year. And with a uh, notable lack of draft eligible catchers this year, he's got a pretty good chance to go in the first few rounds. Of course, uh, Joey Bart at Georgia Tech expected to go in the top five. You've got a couple of high school catchers who might go later in the first round. And after that, Cook might be the next to go. Once again, unable to wait long enough. This time he drives it out of the ballpark with foul. But I think Cook is on top of McGregor right about now. Yeah, it seems like he's getting a little bit closer and a little bit closer every swing. We'll see, that was where a couple breaking balls, 82 miles an hour way out front. We'll see where McGregor goes with this. Is it some type of cutter outside to keep try to keep him off balance? Or if you're going to miss with a fastball, don't miss over the plate because he's timing you up good right now. Shaddy leads at second. Another line drive, short hop on a bounce by Smith. Throw a little bit high, but they record the out. Nice job by Justin McGregor to get out of trouble. Still 2-0 Arkansas. You're watching the 2018 NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. From Baum Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Alongside former Dodgers minor leaguer John Gregory, I'm Doug Sherman. So pleased to have you with us on this first day of the NCAA baseball tournament. And so far, so good for the Arkansas Razorbacks. They have the 2-0 lead, the number five national seed, and one of the favorites to make it all the way to Omaha. They were co-champs of the Western Division in the SEC, along with Ole Miss. And if Dave Van Horn's team can do that in the SEC, they can do damage here in June and make it all the way to the College World Series for sure. Yeah, a lot of that damage has been done here this year with 30 wins. And they're going to be able to, of course, host in this regional here and be able to host a super if, in fact, they can go on and win this regional. And that's a kind of a ticket to the World Series for most teams if they can go on to host Supers. Well, the only hit allowed so far by Blaine Knight was a Nick Rotola single, a bunt single, back in the second inning. Now we'll face the bottom third of the lineup as we begin the fifth inning. Kaiser, McCutcheon, and Smith. Kaiser lifts it to left, giving ground. Cursed at, he looks up, and it is gone. First pitch swinging, Riley Kaiser. Gets Oral Roberts on the board. That's just his fourth home run of the year, but that was a 90 mile an hour fastball that he turned around immediately. Said he had only given up one hit, which was a bunt base hit. Let's see this location up right over the heart of the plate. And for a guy that doesn't hit a whole lot of home runs, just his fourth in the year, he knew from the start that that thing was out of the park. John was, that the first time Blaine Knight's been barreled up today? Yeah, I think so. He's had some balls that have been hit, but mostly pop-ups and some weak ground balls. And uh, that truly was the first one that anybody's barreled up, as you said. Two to one the score. Now the number eight hitter, Trevor McCutcheon. First pitch swinging as well, fouls it off. McCutcheon flied out in the second.
Talked about the depth of this lineup, one through nine as far as hitters go. You know, numbers one through seven, all have been producing this year. The eight and nine spot, kind of the spot that you can get to or want to be if you're pitching against this team, but they can find production from seven, eight, nine somehow today. That would go a long way for Oral Roberts. Yeah, McCutcheon struggled this year with a 208 batting average, but he was first team all conference a year ago as a utility player. Little out in front that time, lifts it out to shallow center. Fletcher comes in. One away. Well, on paper, there's no question about it. Arkansas has the uh, the big advantage. They've got the big bats where Oral Roberts does not really have a lot of big thumpers. But as we talked about off the top, if they can string together a few hits at the right time against Blaine Knight, there's no reason to think they can't uh, give these Razorbacks a ball game. It's two to one as they play the fifth inning. And I think those string of hits have to come from this bottom part of the lineup. Somehow they got to find a way to be able to get on because the guys early in the lineup can certainly put the ball in play. And if you have guys on and putting a little bit of pressure on the defense, that's going to make a big difference in the ball game. Harrison Smith, the senior from Bakersfield, California, out of Frontier, uh, Frontier High School. He knows all about uh, getting on ESPN. He had ESPN's number one top play back in April uh, with a defensive play made against Fort Wayne. Stands in right now with a 268 batting average. Young man who spent a couple of years playing junior college baseball out on the West Coast at Bakersfield College. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. Playing at Bakersfield College, I'll tell you, well, I'll get you used to this heat here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How much of a difference. You can get a little, a little toasty out there as well. Easy pop to first. Gates gloves it. Two out. So what were the stops along the way for you in the Dodgers minor league system? Yeah. Played out in the California League. I was in Lodi, California, so having through Bakersfield, played with some guys from that area out there. Florida State League, another place I was nice and warm and toasty and the ability to do that. And Rookie League up in Canada, so not too bad there weather-wise. Back to the top of the order we go. Nick Rourke, a ground out and a fly out. Oral Roberts has gotten on the board here in the top of the fifth inning with a home run by Riley Kaiser. Blaine Knight has settled right back in after giving up the long ball. You know, growing up in South Florida, talking about the heat, you know, it's something you really just don't recognize when you're that age. You, you know, you're just playing ball out there. You could really care less. It's the people that are out there supporting you in the stands and all of that, but not bad at all. You just go out there and play in baseball. You, not once, I don't think I ever really thought about it. That ball's pretty well hit to right center, but it's playable. Fletcher puts it away. Blaine Knight still in control, but he makes a mistake on the first pitch of the fifth inning. And it was deposited over the wall by Riley Kaiser. Oral Roberts on the board. It's 2-1 Arkansas. Fayetteville, Arkansas, just treated to a little woo pig suey here as the train goes along the uh, left field, outfield wall. College World Series is on the horizon. Will Arkansas be one of the eight teams to get there? Razorbacks have done it time and again. Eight times they've made it that far. They were the national runners up in 1979. The last time Arkansas made it that far to, uh, to the College World Series was three years ago. But they have never been the last team standing, John. They've gotten close. You see the numbers out there on the outfield wall and just out center field there. And those are good numbers. You know, you talk about walking 
players around when you're recruiting guys and getting them here and they look at this ballpark and we saw the indoor facility they had. This team is gonna visit the College World Series a lot more in the future. With Dave Van Horn at the lead of this thing into his 16th year now, 90 draft picks since he's been here. And guys like the freshman players that they have now and Kerstead and Martin, guys they're recruiting now, that indoor facility yeah. is just something to behold when you take a look at that infield and what they have on, underneath that roof right next door to here. And see some of the numbers. They had a record 11 players drafted in 2013 as Jax Biggers takes it low and inside. And Van Horn, as well as anybody, knows the road to Omaha. He, he's been there six times, first two when he was the head coach at Nebraska, and the last four here at Arkansas. And he has had a lot of talent go on to reach the major leagues. It's really a uh, who's who of big leaguers. I mean, you can't go to too many more ballparks, college parks around the country, and have two Cy Young Award winners come out of your program. You've got Dallas Keuchel, now the Houston Astros who is the American League Cy Young Award winner in 2015. And then you've got Cliff Lee, another left-hander, who was the AL Cy Young Award winner in 2008. Yeah, they're, they're just going to have to build more facilities so they can put up more names <laughs> because they just keep adding to the list. <laughs> they're going to run out of spots. Right. And Andrew Benintendi is who you, uh, you alluded to a couple of innings ago. You know, he came in. He's not the biggest guy, but... The growth and development he had in his time here at Arkansas, working with these coaches and with these facilities as Biggers flies out to center field. It's a tremendous recruiting tool for Coach Van Horn and his staff to say, this is what we have and this is what we can do and have done with players like you. It's all about development. Yes, you're going to get the guys that are going to be the number one guys, but it's, it's developing players. Going way back, Jeff King, the first overall draft pick in 1986 of the Pittsburgh Pirates. There's the left-hander Cliff Lee back when they had AstroTurf here at Fayetteville. Dallas Keuchel pre-beard. Clean shaven. And then most recently, Andrew Benintendi, the uh, Golden Spikes Award winner three years ago, who made it to the big leagues very quickly and has established himself as an impact player at the major league level right away, having a great season once again on a tear right now with the Red Sox. I look at that picture and I just think, you know, how much, how strong his arms and forearms look and the growth that he had over his years here. I thought he put a lot of that strength and size on once he got to the Red Sox, but he was put together pretty good as a senior here. They've got several guys currently in the major leagues right now. James McCann, catcher for the Tigers. Logan Forsyth with the Dodgers. And we kind of breeze past Jeff King. He, he's on that Mount Rushmore of Arkansas baseball. He didn't have the big league career that a Chipper Jones or a Ken Griffey Jr., some of the Alex Rodriguez, some of the other number one picks first overall have had. But uh, he was a solid big leaguer, and he was a tremendous college player from the first time he got here to Arkansas back in the 80s. I mean, he had a great freshman year, followed it up with two more years to earn himself the number one overall pick in that uh, 1986 draft by the Pittsburgh Pirates. I got a trivia question for you. All right. First of the regional, I like it. Little comebacker by Cole. He's retired one to three. So King was one of three players to hit two home runs in the same inning twice during his career. Mm. You know the other two? Oof. As I we, thought I'd start you off with an easy one. <laughs> yeah, take a look at that mustache. That's what I'm liking. Uh, Willie McCovey, Andre Dawson. Two okay. other guys. It's unique, hitting okay. two home runs in the same inning twice during his career. Good. It's pretty good stuff. One of the all-time great Razorbacks, no doubt about it. See, I figure you're going to nail me all weekend. I thought I'd just get that one out of the way. I had to study for that. You know? I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> And that's some pretty good company to be keeping if you're Jeff King. A couple of Hall of Famers there. Yeah, as soon as you walk into uh, Baum Stadium here, you are greeted by all the familiar names and faces of those who have passed through these doors and gone on to major league success. And the folks here in Fayetteville take it real seriously. And you and I have had the pleasure of going to LSU, going to Mississippi State, some of the other hotbeds, Ole Miss for college baseball around the SEC as Casey Martin takes his base. 
But here in Arkansas, they don't take a back seat to anybody no, in that department. Not at all. These fans are tremendous. Doesn't matter, two o'clock afternoon on a Friday. And they're all sitting here. That's a good look down the left center field. They got here early. As soon as the gates opened, they were lined up outside already to get those spots for batting practice. And you can see back underneath in the shade, there's, as I said earlier, more people standing back underneath that are not taking the seats right now because it's just too warm of a day to be sitting out there. Yeah, it seems like every two, three, four years, they're putting something else up here for the baseball program. And for the fan experience, the uh, the big scoreboard out in right field's only a couple of years old. And it just is a wonderful environment here in Fayetteville. Fans not happy about the called strike against Heston Kerstad, who blasted a two-run homer his last time up in the third inning. Rips it to right, his second hit. Casey Martin rounds second, heading for third. And he'll beat the throw from McCutcheon. Well, the freshmen continue to swing the bat well. Fastball inside, and Kerstad just yanks this thing into right field, and the speed of Martin at first base easily gets to third, but he recognizes it here. You get the ball to right field, you want to pick up your third base coach. He does. Nice, strong throw by McCutcheon from right field. Kerstad watching that as the ball went to third base. Any slip up there, he was going to make his way to second base and try to get in the scoring position. A little woo pig suey as we have a mound visit from the Oral Roberts dugout. Now we mentioned it before, McGregor on the mound, it was last year where he went four innings and retired four, 10 of the first 12 hitters in that ball game, and he ran into trouble in the fifth. And here we are again. You just wonder, you know, is it going through his mind? He's able to get a couple outs here in this inning. He just needs to find his way out of this inning. I see some action in the bullpen for Oral Roberts. That's Brady Womax, fifth year senior right hander. And I would think on a day like today, it wouldn't take long to get warm. 79 pitches from McGregor out on the mound right now through his four and two thirds innings. And probably no bigger hitter for him right now than right here. If he doesn't get this guy, do you go get him early in this thing? Well, this is the cleanup hitter for Arkansas. Luke Bonfield, 0 for 2, batting 305 on the year. There you go, up and down this Arkansas lineup, lots of power. Starting with Cole at the top with his 12 home runs. You look at the home run totals, 12, 13, 11, 8, 8, 10 out of your top six hitters. Doesn't need a home run here, a base hit will score a run for the Razorbacks. Once again, McGregor goes to the rosin bag, laboring here in the fifth, trying to get through this inning unscathed. In the dirt, 3-0. Started him with a breaking ball and trying to stay off speed here with him at the plate. Bonfield, young man from New Jersey, who played his last year of high school ball in Florida at IMG Academy, takes a strike. Dangerous hitter, been a starter ever since his freshman year. Didn't play much freshman year, but uh, middle of the order kind of guy. 6'3", 215 pound senior out of Immaculata High School in New Jersey. Runner at third is Martin. He was hit by a pitch. The runner at first is Kerstad. And McGregor escapes the jam. 
Nice job by the right-hander for Oral Roberts. Leaves a couple of runners on base. It's still 2-1 Hogs. Florida Gators make it back-to-back -back national championships. Florida, the number one overall national seed coming into this year's tournament, looking to defend that crown from a year ago. Hasn't been done since the Gamecocks a few years ago from South Carolina. And you would think Florida's got as good a shot as anybody, but I'm telling you, John, they struggled the last couple of weeks, had an early exit from the SEC tournament, and in spite of all the talent and all that they have done, when a team gets sideways, sometimes can't get out of their own way. Exactly, and uh, as you said, you know, many people say, okay, SEC tournament, uh, you know, they weren't focused on that. They're going to focus on the World Series, and that made all the sense in the world you think about it but the way they finish the year too it's questionable you know does it start to leak into the back of your mind that you know hey we're not playing our best baseball right now and can you turn it around but for them today a good sign they got behind early in their ball game to columbia today and ended up winning that thing pretty easily but uh for for a short amount of time, I bet you there were some Gator fans at the end of their seats a little concerned. Yeah, Columbia led 3-1 in the third inning, but uh, Florida finished up with a 13-5 victory, scored six times in one inning. And so they are in the winner's bracket down in the Gainesville Regional as Cal Hernandez is retired. Just 66 pitches so far for Blaine Knight in this ball game, and you know we're into the sixth inning. That's how efficient he's been on the mound. And, you want that type of efficiency on a day like this. You just get the feeling nothing really rattles him out on the mound. If he has a bad day or a bad inning, he's a guy that just kind of lets it go off the shoulder, doesn't worry about it too much, and refocuses on the next hitter. Some of the other winners so far today around the country, Oklahoma State has beaten South Florida 9-2. Vanderbilt shut out St. John's 2-0. We mentioned Florida over Columbia 13-5. Washington with a 7-1 win over Connecticut. Those are the finals. A couple of regionals in weather delays right now. It's uh, raining in Athens, Georgia, with Troy leading Duke 5-0 in the middle innings. And Missouri State and Tennessee Tech have not gotten underway in Oxford, Mississippi. Low and outside to Noah Cummings. Boy, what a marvelous year Noah Cummings has had. The fifth-year senior from... Alpine, California, Granite Hills High School. He became Oral Roberts' all-time RBI king last week. He's a three-time Summit League first-teamer. On the infield, Biggers calls for it and makes the catch. Really For good. more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and Interactive Brackets, go to NCAA.com. Excuse me, John. Sorry about that. Was looking the other direction. Not the first replay. time we're going to do that this week. <laughs> Didn't mean to step on you there. I was just going to say, pretty good communication there. That ball was popped up, and Martin at third base immediately started calling for it, and Biggers took control of it. Really good communication on their part there on a lazy fly ball. Spencer Henson, the cleanup hitter, for Oral Roberts. Takes the ball. He's flied out a couple of times. Came in with a gaudy 368 batting average. He's a fire plug of a guy. Got a lot of power. Nine home runs to lead the team. He and Cummings both have nine. 54 ribbies, which is second on the team to Cummings. Oral Roberts down a run. All three runs have come on home runs. Ripped to third. Scooped and the throw to first by Casey Martin. Three up, three down in the sixth. Two one Razorbacks on top of the Golden Eagles. Back in Fayetteville, Arkansas with John Gregory, I'm Doug Sherman. The Razorbacks with a two one lead over Oral Roberts in this first game of the Fayetteville Regional. It's NCAA baseball presented by Capital One. Every single game between here and Omaha 
brought to you on the ESPN networks and we're glad you've tuned in here this afternoon got a good one the one seed here in the regional Arkansas being pushed by the four seed Oral Roberts it's the SEC against the Summit League but the uh, right hander on the mound for the Golden Eagles Justin McGregor has done a tremendous job navigating through a little bit of trouble against this very dangerous Razorbacks offense. Yeah, offense. Able to get out of that last inning. I think they had a visit to the mound. Bullpen was ready, so I think he'll probably be on a short leash from here. Pitch count now up to 86 on the day. So, you know, how much do you let him go on a warm day like this? He's thrown seven and a third year this year. That's his longest outing. That was back on May 13th, and for a career, he's never had a complete game. He's gone eight last year against Western Illinois. Walks the leadoff hitter, Fletcher. And that's not a good way for him to get the sixth inning underway. The ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, Longhorn Network, SEC Network, and ESPN3. You can keep up with the entire tournament with bases loaded no matter where you are, including here at the ballpark. John Gregory and I keep a track of everything else as we get another mound visit for the Golden Eagles. That young lady's not worried about what's going on in the Gainesville Regional or out in Corvallis. She's having fun right here in Fayetteville. Yep, and creating memories. I'll tell you, she'll never forget it. This will be the time she goes, we used to go all the time. I remember it. Let's take a look at Wes Davis, the pitching coach. Out on the mound for Oral Roberts having a conversation. I imagine we said Justin McGregor is going to be on a short leash. He may be. It may be over for him now. I'm not sure. They may give him one more hitter, but this is an awful long conversation out there. Did you see that score that just flashed by in the top right corner of the screen? I did not. 20 runs have been scored by the Oklahoma Sooners, and that game in Starkville is not over. Fireworks at Duty Noble. It's 20 to 10 as they play the ninth inning, Oklahoma over Mississippi State. And if I'm a Sooners fan, I'm thinking, save some of those runs for later in the week. <laughs> we could always use them. And you see Brady Womax warming up in the bullpen down right field. Same right-hander who was warming up last inning. And I should correct myself. I keep saying that's a duty noble. I'm just so used to the Bulldogs being the, uh, the host for a regional. That's in Tallahassee. So they're at the Florida State Regional where the balls are flying out of the ballpark, Oklahoma and Mississippi State. Carson Shaddy takes it low and outside. And once again, Justin McGregor struggling to find the strike zone. First strike of the inning thrown after six consecutive balls by McGregor. Senior from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Two-time first team all summit. After having played a couple of years at Cowley County Community College in Arkansas City, Kansas. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. The tag in time. What a play by Nick Rourke to apply the tag and get Fletcher down at second base. How about the throw by Kaiser here? He gets the, has to backhand it and throw over the top of Shaddy. Rourke with a nice pick and applies the tag and seemed like he got him pretty easy. Not on a, on a pitch that was not easy to be able to get him thrown out at second base on that breaking ball. Yeah, and you heard those fans that are seated behind the first base dugout. Something to cheer for here. Their club is hanging with the Arkansas Razorbacks. And that's a big lift for this right-handed pitcher. Shaddy lifts it deep to left center field. And that will go. Eleventh home run of the year for Carson Shaddy. And the lead is back to two. Three one Arkansas. Watch Shaddy deliver this down in the zone of breaking ball. He easily reaches out for that and delivers it over left center field. 
that ball gets out of here. I was kind of thinking maybe Shaddy in that situation, when they had the runner at first base, maybe he's going to bunt him over. But when you have 10 home runs in that situation, maybe you just let him swing away. And that makes up for the caught stealing there as he puts him up. Maybe that insurance run that they need. Now we talked about the fact that Grant Cook is a local here in Fayetteville. So too is Carson Shaddy. That ball blistered off the wall and right by Jared Gates, digging for second in safely with a double. And Jared that Gates. will do it for Justin McGregor as we take another look. As you see Jared Gates here, just five doubles on the year. This one off the wall. It's his decision here. It's right in front of him. He decides to get to second base. He gets about halfway there and says, uh-oh, I may be in trouble here. <laughs> I got to turn it on and somehow get in there. But picks up another double for him, and we're going to have a change on the mound. With a pitching change, we'll step away from Baum Stadium here in Fayetteville. Razorbacks have their hitting shoes on here in the bottom of the sixth. You are watching the 2018 NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. On a beautiful afternoon here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Doug Sherman along with former Dodgers minor leaguer John Gregory. There is a breeze blowing in from right field, but uh, it is hot and sticky. Summertime has certainly settled upon the Ozark Mountains. There's a look at the new right-hander coming out of the bullpen for Oral Roberts. His name is Brady Womack. Brady Womack is a fifth-year senior from Pavely, Missouri. And he was a uh, lights-out closer a couple of years ago, used in a different role this year. Yeah, you can see that ERA, 197, only eight walks in 40 or 32 innings pitch. He's got 40 K. He's a guy that can throw strikes for you, and he was a long reliever. Real heavy ball, throws 89 to 92. 80 mile an hour slider in there. He's got a split change, so effective guy to be able to put in this situation here. See if he can't get him out of this inning and keep this game close. First pitch to Grant Cooks, low and away. Cooks 0 for 2, pop up and a ground out. Boy, the junior catcher from just up the road right here in Fayetteville. Runner at second is Jared Gates. He very nearly made it back-to-back -back home runs with his double off the wall and right that knocked Justin McGregor out of the ball game after he pitched five and a third. Fastball up and in. 88 miles an hour on the gun. And it's three balls and no strikes. The Gates ball may have had an opportunity to get out of here. That wind not blowing into right field. He leads his second 3-0 pitch. He is a called strike. Well, Max, another one of the uh, junior college transfers. Spent a couple of seasons at uh, Jefferson Community College in Missouri. Good high fastball at 89 miles an hour. Swung through by Cook, and he's battled back to a full count. Three runs on six hits, no errors for Arkansas. One, two, and zero for Oral Roberts. Cook rips it into left. They'll try to score the runner. Gates beats the throw. 4-1 Arkansas. Grant Cook right here delivers another RBI. Been swinging the bat as good as anybody on this team recently. 
You can see it's going to be a close play at the plate as you see Gates rounding third. Another nice throw cut off that time, not able to get Gates and Cook picks up another key RBI late in this ballgame. So you can close the book on Justin McGregor, five and a 30, allowed four runs, all earned on six hits. He walked three and struck out one. And now Womax will face the nine hitter for Arkansas, Jax Biggers, who singled and scored on the Kerstad home run back in the third. Strike one. Jax Biggers is a junior out of Ridgepoint High School, Missouri City, Texas. Named the All Greater Houston team coming out of high school. His father, Brian, used to coach at Lamar University. And he swings and drives one deep to right into the wind. Did he get enough? It's gone! Second home run of the inning. And Arkansas makes it 6-1. to one. Well, we mentioned the finger that Biggers had, the fracture at the tip of it. We said it really didn't bother him at the plate. He laced a single earlier with that same finger. Well, now he shows how it really doesn't affect him as he takes this thing deep to right field and delivers it into the bullpen again, as you mentioned, for the second home run of the inning and our second visit to the mound. And it's been the bottom of the order here in the sixth inning doing all the damage. Short outing for Brady Womax, who exits to woo Pig Suey. We'll take another break as the Golden Eagles make another pitching change here at Fayetteville. Heston Kerstad got it started in the third and then in the fifth inning. Oral Roberts got one of the runs back, a solo shot by Riley Kaiser, but here in the sixth, it has been all Razorbacks. Carson Shaddy hit a solo home run. Jax Bakers has just lifted a two-run blast that has prompted another pitching change by the Golden Eagles. And so left-hander Colton Larkins will come into the ball game and take his chances with this potent Arkansas lineup. Colton Larkins, the guy, 23 appearances on the year. You can see that 35 Ks in 31 innings. And Larkins, a little different look, of course, being from the left side, 85 to 88. He'll kind of drop down to the side a little bit, little sink on that with a sweeping slider. So we'll see how the lefty can fare against this lineup that's gotten on fire here recently. Eric Cole takes a pitch. That's a called strike. So no batters have been retired this half inning. The only out came on a caught stealing. Dominic Fletcher led off the inning with a walk. He was caught stealing, but since that time, a homer, a double, a single, and another home run has opened up a 6-1 lead for the Razorbacks. And another line drive. That gets down in left field for a base hit. First of the day for Cole. He's one for four. So far, this Razorback offense has been able to get to the bullpen of Oral Roberts quickly. And that was one of the things that Wes Davis and Ryan Fulmer, coaching staff for Oral Roberts, thought that they had an advantage, or one of the things they have an advantage on. They've got three guys in the pen that have been really good this year. And right now, this. Razorbacks offense is turning the ball around on them. That's a ball to Casey Martin. He's been on base twice with a double and a hit pit, hit by pitch. High chopper over the mound. Tough chance. Smith. And he gets the out at first. Two men away. Down to second goes Eric Cole, and that'll bring up the number three hitter, Heston Kerstad. Now Coach Fulmer wanted to get as much as he could out of his starter here today. Justin McGregor did a pretty good job and got through the fifth this time. 
Last year it was through the fourth, got them to the fifth, and finally Arkansas has been able to put four up here to get to them and get to the bullpen. You know that beautiful big uh, scoreboard out in right field we've been talking about at uh, Baum Stadium? They put up a couple of years ago. Pretty imposing out there, but the man at home plate has cleared that. Against Louisiana Monroe earlier this year, a 430-foot home run. Already had a couple of home runs here in the inning. And he's got himself a 1-1 count. Kerstad's 12th of the year came back in the third. He looks at another strike. It's one and two. Really good balance at the plate. We talked about him being able to drive the ball to right field over the scoreboard. We saw him hit the home run earlier to left field, too. So. Good left-handed hitter, not afraid to go to left center field and drive it the other way. High fly ball, deep right field, but McCutcheon has room. Nice job by the left-hander, Larkins, coming out of the bullpen, but before that, Arkansas was playing long ball. Razorbacks with a pair of home runs of the inning, Carson Shaddy with a solo shot, and then a two-run blast off the bat of Jax Biggers, has blown it open, 6-1 Arkansas on top. Part of a great contingent out of the SEC once again this year. Ten different SEC teams in the field of 64 this year, and you can see no other conference has done it at this time of year like the SEC. What an awesome time it is. I mean, baseball, college baseball has just grown tremendously in the coverage that ESPN provides. I think it just brings just so more more and more people every year attending the World Series and watching it. It's just become just a bigger sport because of, I think, the coverage that all of these regionals and super regionals get. And traditionally, the footprint of college baseball has been the deep south and out west, but it continues to grow. Like, look at the Big Ten Conference now. Yeah. You know, five, ten years ago, it was not as good as it is now. You've got Minnesota hosting a regional this year, which is a tremendous thing to help that part of the country be further introduced to college baseball. We've had Indiana as a host before. Louisville, Kentucky has been a host. Of course, they're in the ACC, but again, different parts of the country. You know, Connecticut was in the conversation out of the of American Athletic Conference to potentially host this year, and that would have been a rarity having a host in the Northeast. And out West, we may not have the depth in the Pac-12 Conference in terms of number of teams in, but when you've got Stanford and Oregon State as two of the prohibitive favorites to get to Omaha, you're very well represented out on the West Coast. By the way, in that Minneapolis regional right now, John, Gonzaga is leading UCLA in the ninth inning 5-2. to two. So the Zags could be uh, knocking off the Bruins in the Twin Cities. First out here in the top of the seventh inning as the right-hander Blaine Knight continues to cruise for Arkansas. Cruise, that's 19, 23 batters he's faced. He's got 19 out, so just over the minimum there. Been very efficient, just 77 pitches. We've said that before, through six and a third now. Doesn't get much better than that. He gave up a bunt single in the second inning to the man at the plate right now, Nick Rotola, and then a home run to Riley Kaiser on the first pitch he threw in the fifth inning. And other than that, he has been extremely stingy. Knight has walked one. He has hit a batter. Just a couple of strikeouts. Traditional wind and pitch, and there's that slow curveball that really is his fourth pitch, but he gets it over for a called strike. And it's a really good pitch off of that cutter that he threw before that. He'll throw the fastball, we said before, up there in the mid-90s, and that cutter gives him something around 86 to 88, and then he comes back with that slow breaking ball. Really keeps you off balance. There's that fastball at 93 miles an hour. Fought off nicely by Rotola. Well, for Blaine Knight, it has been a family affair for sure. His father, Blake, played at Division II 
Southern Arkansas University for the Mule Riders. They're actually a powerhouse, those Mule, Mule Riders. Riders. And uh, Blaine's mom, Karen, well, she works at uh, Collegeville Elementary School. That's the same place where uh, Blaine attended school through the fifth grade. I know everybody there in Bryant, Arkansas, keeping track of how things are going here this afternoon at Baum Stadium. Misses upstairs. Got away with that. That was that cutter. Left it a little high. Rotola, a guy with a hot back, can turn that around. He got away with that pitch here. Let's see if he goes back to fastball low and away here. 91 mile an hour heat. Fouled out of play. Tried to get him with the fastball out there. Good pitch sequence for him here. Started with the cutter and then came back with that nice breaking ball to get ahead like that and then tried to get him inside and doesn't do that. Goes fastball away. See if he goes back breaking ball here. Well, the Texas Rangers took a flyer on him last year in the 29th round. He didn't sign. He wanted a lot more money. He will not last that long on Monday or Tuesday. He is projected as a possible first round pick. And Blaine Knight almost or assuredly will turn professional once the season is done here at Arkansas. He's had a fabulous career, a perfect season as a junior. 10 and 0 is his record. ERA under three. And he's pitched brilliantly here this afternoon in the heat in Fayetteville. Yeah, one of the things I said at the very top of this thing, he's been perfect all year as far as record goes. He didn't need to have a perfect outing here today, but 19 of 23 batters face that he's retired, so he's almost been perfect. Now the 2-2 pitch. Count goes full. Blaine Knight is known success here at Baum Stadium, not just during his three-year run as a collegiate player with the Razorbacks back in 2014. He led his high school team from Bryant, Arkansas to the 7A state title here at Baum. Payoff pitch, chopped to short. Biggers. Two away. Well, the only real mistake made by Blaine Knight came in the fifth inning, and Riley Kaiser made him pay. Kaiser not known for home run power, but sir was looking fastball there, got it up, and delivered it out in the bullpen out there in left field. You said really the only damage that Blaine Knight has allowed. You know, really, the only ball that's been hit extremely hard against him. And that was on the first pitch of that at bat. I would figure Blaine Knight's got a different plan of attack here, along with his catcher, Grant Cook, on the first pitch to Kaiser, who also walked his first time up. Goes with a fastball at 92 miles an hour. That is called a ball 1-0. Breaking ball misses inside. This is the first of our two games here in Fayetteville, Arkansas today. Our nightcap will pit the two and the three seed against each other. Will be Southern Miss against Dallas Baptist, and you can see every one of those pitches on the ESPN app. So glad you're with us here today to see Arkansas and Oral Roberts. 93 mile an hour fastball called strike one. Kaiser drives another one deep to left, and that will go. Riley Kaiser is Blaine Knight's kryptonite here this afternoon. Well, three home runs coming into the ball game. Two today, really an unexpected. Out of that number seven hole and he just delivers again out there and really trying to keep his team in there single-handed as he hits this out of there almost looked identical to the first one just went a little bit more toward center field there as he really got a hold of that one too well the redshirt sophomore 
who transferred in from Oklahoma A&M is the 2018 Summit League Newcomer of the Year, first team all-conference, and he had big shoes to fill, replacing Matt Watley, who was the Johnny Bench Award winner from a year ago out of Oral Roberts, third-round draft pick to the Rangers. Kaiser looks like a third-round pick here today with a couple of home runs. He's been on base all three times and a little life for Oral Roberts. And it's a guy, you can see him, you know, he didn't have to battle necessarily at the plate. You know, he's got some power now. He's showing that. Led the team in walks, so he's very patient at the plate. Typically gets the pitch he wants. Now Trevor McCutcheon stands in. He's got himself a one-and-one one count. McCutcheon has hit the ball in the air twice. A couple of fly outs. Shaddy gobbles up the grounder and gets the out. One run on the solo homer by Kaiser. 6-2 Arkansas here at Fayetteville. With runners in scoring position. And here is Dominic Fletcher looking for his first hit on the afternoon. 0 for 2 with a walk. Of course, we're in Arkansas, and so that means Walmart is uh, the big employer around here. And that bunt will go foul as you and I got our assignments Monday afternoon that we were coming here to Fayetteville. Of course, the immediate press is to get yourself your travel arrangements to get here with the idea that, well, we'll be able to get a hotel. It's not going to be a problem. How much action can be going on in Fayetteville this time of year? But we uh, come to find out that uh, the Walmart shareholders or stockholders meetings are going on all week here in uh, northwest Arkansas. So... There are no hotel rooms to be had. No, hence driving down the road, you pass up about 10, 15 <laughs> hotels. <laughs> You're about 20, 30 minutes away. Dominic Fletcher drops one into right center field. Stopping at second is Bonfield. He had to wait to see if Rotola out in center field was going to have a play on it. Back-to-back -back singles against Colton Larkins to begin the bottom of the seventh. You're right, Bonfield probably could have made it to third on that play, but he had to hold up as that ball actually looked like Watola was going to come down with it. You could see him kind of just taking his time loafing there, not sure. Normally you'll see a guy kind of raise his hand up even if he can't get there to kind of deke the runner or decoy the runner, but no need. Bonfield taking his time. Station to station right now. No sense in doing anything crazy with no outs. Going to get a pinch runner for Arkansas. Hunter Wilson takes the place of Luke Bonfield. Carson Shaddy showing bunt, lays it down, foul. Fielded by Hernandez, strike one to Shaddy. Last time up, Shaddy was up, actually had the opportunity to lay down a bunt runner on first. There were no outs. I thought they were maybe going to try to get an insurance run. They elected to steal second base, was thrown out. Then he promptly hits a home run after that. This situation here, 6-2 to two lead. Now that we're in the seventh inning, a couple more runs important. They're going to try to move them over here with no outs. There continues to be action in both bullpens. Arkansas out and left. Oral Roberts in right. This time the bunt is fair. Only play is to first for Hernandez, a successful sacrifice for Carson Shaddy. And the fans give him a little applause there. Just that's his fourth sacrifice bunt. They haven't asked him to do it a whole lot this year, but we're in regional time and it's important for them to get the runners in scoring position. Now you've got Fletcher at second and second base and Wilson down at third that can score on a base hit. And now the infield comes in for the left handed batting Jared Gates against the left handed pitching Colton Larkins. Couldn't hold up on the breaking ball, strike one. 
Well, against left-handed pitching this year, Jared Gates only six for 26. That's a 231 batting average, just about the same numbers as you saw from the right side or facing right-handers. But for him now, advantage with this infield in. Larkins tried to expand the strike zone, get him to chase again. He wouldn't do it. And the count evens one and one. Right now, you're thinking with one out, all I need to do is drive this ball somewhere with the infield in, just hit it hard. If you can lift it anywhere, pick up that run on a sacrifice fly. Around the infield, Hernandez the defender at third, Smith at short, Rourke at second, Henson at first. Swing and a miss, another off-speed pitch, it's one and two. Got him on the breaking ball, 76 mile an hour. Curve there to the lefty. See if he goes back to it here. One ball, two strikes. Kind of fooled on that. Gates take the ball back to center field, left center field and drive it with that right shoulder. It's a guy that can hit it to all fields, too. Off speed again, fouled at the plate. Count holds one and two. Well, John, in situations like this this year, Gates is four for six with runners with a runner at third and less than two outs. Doesn't need a base hit, though. All he needs is a fly ball or a well-placed ground ball get a run at uh, get a runner in from third got the pinch runner hunter wilson at third fletcher out at second and for or roberts really they have the best matchup here with larkins on the mound with that sweeping slider that he can throw struck him out two men away the ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage today on ESPN2, ESPNU, the SEC Network, the Lawnmower Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded Channel. And all coverage is available on the ESPN app. You know, if you want to tune in, use the Bases Loaded app as a companion service on your tablet or computers in addition to watching other games on television. You can keep track of everything all around the country as we have another pitching change here in Fayetteville. Not a bad job turned in by Colton Larkins who escaped trouble in the sixth, but he leaves two runners aboard with two outs here in the seventh. Arkansas up by four. For the first time in the history of the NCAA tournament, they have seeded not just the top eight national seeds, but one through 16. And so you get a non-regional matchup in the Super Regionals. You will have the one versus the 16. The survivor of the Gainesville Regional will face the survivor of the Raleigh Regional from North Carolina State and so forth, which is, as far as I'm concerned, a much better way to go about doing it. I agree wholeheartedly there. I love the matchup there. You know who you're... No, I, I think that's the way to do it because going in, you know, you, you think about positioning yourself. You certainly can't position yourself there, but you know how it's going to all you know, unfold when you do that. And uh, I like the way they did it. As Grant Townsend, the new pitcher in there for Oral Roberts, junior right-hander from Lake Taps, Washington, and based on his warm-up tosses he was touching 87 88 on the uh, radar gun with his fastball and Townsend's the guy about 89 to 93 he'll throw the slider 80 to 84 but he's one of those group of guys that you can see over 20 appearances there's four guys on this team when you talk about stout Womax and Townsend out there those guys have combined for 132 strikeouts in 95 innings so that's about 12.4 per nine innings, and they've got a 10 and three record with 15 saves. So they've got quality arms out of the pen, but tough situation here for Townsend. Facing the number eight hitter in the lineup, Grant Cook. He had an RBI single his last time. The all SEC catcher tries to check his swing and does, says first base umpire Tim Rosso. Cook has a pop out, a ground out. And then an RBI single 
as part of a four run uprising in the sixth. The runner at third is Wilson. He came on as a pinch runner for Bonfield. Breaking ball for a called strike. It's one and one. Well, this game was scoreless until the bottom half of the third inning when Heston Kerstad belted a two run homer. Oral Roberts got one back in the top of the fifth on a home run from Riley Kaiser. But Arkansas has been playing from in front ever since that third inning. Cook laid off again. It's two and one. You talk about the 116 matchups at the Sun Belt Conference Tournament last week. Gary Gilmore, coach at Coastal Carolina, talking about their discussion of getting in, whether they were going to host or not host, but talking about hosting as the, if you were the number 16 spot, knowing that you were going to have to go down for Florida. You know, you're thinking, do I want to be a 16? You want to host a regional, but uh, you know, do you want to be that spot? And sometimes it's just the luck of the draw where you're going to end up. So. It really created some more excitement into, you know, the decision on where people are going and whether you're hosting or not and how you match up. And we should give a congratulations to Stetson University. The Hatters hosting for the first time. They've got a regional down there in DeLand, Florida. Bouncing ball, fair. Hernandez tries to make the tag, can't do it. A run scores on the tremendous base running by Dominic Fletcher. I think it was a really good decision by Hernandez to go after Fletcher at second base here. It would have been a long throw, but clearly this should have been an out. But Hernandez really just overran it here. Stopped right there, but looks like he just kept going, and that allowed. Fletcher to dodge him, get in, and because of that, they get another key run. And I'm curious how they're scoring that. There's no error posted on the board, but uh, it's a fielder's choice. That allows the run to score. Clearly, though, there should have been an out recorded. But with no force, he couldn't go to the bag. He had to make the tag, couldn't do it. And in hindsight, should have thrown to first. Where Cook is aboard. Runners on the corner, 7-2 Arkansas. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Jax Biggers, who has had a big ball game, takes a strike. It's one and one. Biggers singled and scored in the third. And then hit a two-run homer last inning. That at the time made the score six to one Arkansas. Townsend's pitch fouled. It's a ball and two strikes. At first, I thought Hernandez actually clipped the bag with his foot, maybe, and kind of stumbled a bit toward the mound and that enabled Fletcher to kind of jump around and get in there. But second look, I don't think he actually hit the bag. I just think he overran that play. Yeah, just an unusual play all the way around. Delayed steal. Throw goes to third. Well, after we talked about the great base running by Fletcher, we almost had to talk about the bad base running, and now he looks to be hurt. Was able to get back to the base safely, but uh, it may have been costly holding that right hand. You see Nate Thompson, third base coach, looking down on him right now, not feeling sorry for him, saying, Got to be aware that that throw is coming back. Good delayed steal. Glad to see he's okay. Coach will go over and talk to him now, but he was fortunate to be able to get back. That was a nice throw by Kaiser right on the bag, and Hernandez 
made a really good defensive play, stopping that ball from going into left field. So runners on second and third as we take another look. And the pitch here to the plate. Biggers takes high and outside, two balls and two strikes. Fletcher was really fooled on that pump fake by Kaiser. Go back to that play. Hernandez really just saved a run there because that ball goes into left field. Fletcher's walking toward home plate. High pop, shallow center, Rourke out from second, and he puts it away. But Arkansas tacks on to its lead. One run on two hits. A couple of men left, 7-2, Razorbacks. And he starts the number nine hitter off with a ball low and inside. Smith, Rourke, and Hernandez, 9-1-2, due up here in the top of the eighth inning. as the late afternoon shadows begin to creep towards the home plate area. Fastball stands Harris, uh, Harrison Smith up, and the count is two and one. 92 pitches into it, that was fastball up and in, sitting at 90, so. Hasn't lost any of his velocity through the first seven. Three balls and a strike. Oral Roberts University was founded in 1963. Six years later, they got the baseball program going. And only nine years later, they played in the College World Series in Omaha. Oral Roberts beat North Carolina in their first game back in 78, some 40 years ago. Pop up near home plate. Cook calls for it, and the catcher puts it away. Night fastball inside. Arm side, good movement on that. That's got a tail into the right-handed hitter. Very tough hit. Pitch to hit there. Great location. And John, when you and I, as Nick Rourke steps in, get a chance to see some of these different programs at uh, NCAA regional time, you do your homework and do some digging, and I get a kick out of figuring out who the, the great names in, in the history of like an Oral Roberts program is. and. Mike Moore is at the top of the list. He was a right-handed pitcher drafted number one overall in 1981 by the Seattle Mariners who went on to have a 14-year major league career. And, and you, while you were <laughs> playing in the minor leagues for the Dodgers, had a little eye-opening uh, at bat against Mike Moore, I guess. Yeah, I did. I was 18 years old at the time. And I remember hearing three pitches go by me, <laughs> all 90 miles an hour. At that time, nobody was throwing 90 except he was one of the guys. And instructional league out in Arizona and boy I'll tell you what that was a lesson for an 18 year old to face that 90 mile an hour for the first 90 mile an hour for the first time I mean that was eight back in 81 and we didn't have all of the coverage that we do now is work flies out to center field but you were acutely aware that that guy was drafted first overall oh yeah you knew when you stepped in the box <laughs> that just wasn't some no. other young kid out on the mound no there are special guys uh you know names that you know of course you're not going to remember everybody you face out there but you remember the names of the guys that make it to the big leagues and guys that were top draft picks and things like that so yeah you i, rec I recall that very well you also had the chance to stare down Roger Clemens, a young Roger Clemens in the minor leagues. He's one guy that didn't strike me out, though. That was better. I was 0 for 3, but, uh, <laughs> but I didn't strike out. <laughs> that was Florida State League. But he could throw it. But, yeah. you, you know, but I do recall him in the World Series. That's the thing you remember about him, you know, and, and batting against that. So it's a... Uh, 
Special time. I mean, in the minor leagues, you're just going to run across guys. Not not a whole lot of guys make it, just a handful, but the ones that do certainly deserve to be there. Cal Hernandez takes a fastball high and outside. And Roger Clemens is a big college baseball fan these days, especially because his youngest son, Cody, is uh, the Big 12 Conference Player of the Year for the Texas Longhorns. 19 home runs for the second baseman, and uh, they are hosting a regional today. And the Rocket has followed all four of his sons all around the country as they have made their way through college and minor league baseball. And when his oldest son was playing minor league ball in the Houston Astros organization, Roger would come. He was still a, a major league pitcher for the Astros at the time, and he would fly in between starts to go throw batting practice to his son at the minor league park. And I'd have the opportunity to stand there behind the cage and get a similar experience to what you had. Oh, wow. Now, I was behind the net and didn't have a bat in my hand, but I got a feel of, wow, that's Roger Clemens, 60, well, for me, probably 70 feet away as opposed to 60 feet away. Yeah, and you had as much success as I did. <laughs> no, I didn't make contact. <laughs> I, I did not put barrel to the ball, and I, I'm certain I wouldn't. And you know what? His oldest son during BP one time took him deep. Next pitch, Roger threw, up, up and in. in. <laughs> <laughs> and I think his son knew it was coming. <laughs> So would that be his bullpen day that he threw? I mean, was kind yeah. of... Yeah, in his last know. contract with the Astros, you know, they were happy to make any accommodations mm -hmm. he had. And, you know, at that point, he had already won a half a dozen Cy Young Awards. And, okay, Roger, do what you got to do and just be ready in five days. So he and his wife would fly up to Troy, New York. He'd get a little workout in with the kids, buzz his son with a fastball under the chin, and <laughs> well. head back down to Houston and face the Cincinnati Reds the next day or something. 3-1 pitch, fought off by Hernandez, and it's a routine fly and left. Quick and tidy, 1-2-3 inning for Blaine Knight. He has been in control through eight. Arkansas 7, Oral Roberts 2 in this opening game of the Fayetteville Regional as we head to the bottom half of the eighth inning. With John Gregory, I'm Doug Sherman. There's a look at the uh, comparison. Oral Roberts has gotten its two runs on a pair of solo home runs off the bat of Riley Kaiser. Arkansas, meanwhile, has played long ball as well. And good production up and down the lineup. And tremendous pitching out of their all-SEC right-hander, Blaine Knight. Bottom of the eighth, we'll have the top of the order, Cole Martin and Kerstad for the Hogs. And I doubt we'll see Blaine Knight come out for the ninth inning, just the reaction of the players as they greeted him after that eighth inning. And they've got action in the bullpen, so I doubt we'll see Blaine Knight again, but if we do, that'll be the first time that he's gone nine innings. That was the first time that he completed eight all year, so 104 pitches into the day, that may be it for him. Swing and a miss by Eric Cole. Facing Grant Townsend, the fourth pitcher of the afternoon for the Golden Eagles. As we keep a track of the NCAA baseball tournament, Jeremy Mills from ESPN Statistics does a terrific job of keeping all of us apprised of what is happening around the country. Let's us know that the Big 12 Conference is off to a 3-0 start with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State both picking up wins in seed upsets while Texas Tech won at home. And so the Big 12 Conference has five teams in the field of 64, and they are off to a 3-0 start. I mean, there's no question the SEC comes in with the most teams and, and having had the best season. But uh, the Big 12 is number two in RPI. The Pac-12 has got a lot of top-heavy teams that could really do some damage for sure. The American Athletic Conference as well. And, of course, the ACC, as always, has... A lot of dangerous teams that could work their way to uh, to Omaha. ACC has six teams in, SEC 10. And then the American, the Big 10, and the Pac-12 all have four teams in the field. The American, meanwhile, is off to a bad start. 0-2 so far today. Yeah, South Florida lost Oklahoma State 9-2. And then, as we've mentioned, Connecticut lost as well. So those are the two American athletic conference teams that have put themselves onto the loser's bracket in their respective regional. Casey Martin takes it low and outside, ball one.
UCLA, one of those West Coast teams you were talking about, you may have said that, came back and won that ball game. Yeah, Gonzaga couldn't hold on to the lead. What was that final score out there? That was in Minneapolis, I think. 6-5. Yes, yeah, so it was. 6-5, you're right. Four runs in the bottom of the ninth inning for a walk-off win for the Bruins. They were another team that was in discussions a little bit earlier, probably three quarters of the way through the year that they were looking to possibly host. Had some injury problems on the pitching staff and lost some key games down the road there and didn't have the ability to do that. So they find yourself in a region there, but at Stanford, you mentioned Indiana, Indiana having a regional a few years back. I was at that regional there and Stanford ended up winning that mm -hmm. at that region. So West Coast teams come in this direction, proving their worth. Uh, UCLA scored four runs in the ninth inning today to win after trailing 4 nothing in the sixth. And it ties the Bruins' largest come-from-behind win of the season. They beat Wazoo 8-5 back in the middle of March after trailing 5-1. to one. So UCLA knocks off Gonzaga against the odds. Strike called to Casey Martin. It's 3-1. and one. And the weather, uh, as always, plays a role. The Oxford Regional already has had its second game officially pushed back to Saturday due to inclement weather and field conditions down on the Ole Miss campus. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. It's a stolen base for Eric Cole. And now head coach Dave Van Horn coming out to question home plate umpire Joe Burleson, who says that was strike three. Looks like uh, they're sending the runner back. It may be interference here. They think Casey Martin may have gotten in the way of Kaiser. Watch when Martin swings and misses here. Had to throw over the top of him, and immediately the home plate umpire. You can see him right there saying interference, and they send a runner back to first base. So Eric Cole back on the first base bag. So Martin down on strikes. Cole back at first with one out. And Heston Kerstad, who homered in the third, stands in. And this young man, as you noticed yesterday while we were talking to him and then watching him take batting practice, listed at 6'3", 190, a freshman out of Randall High School in Amarillo, Texas. How big did you say you think his waist is around? Yeah, I don't know. It looks like about a 32, I think. And just chiseled. He has got a lot of power in that body. You know, I don't know because I don't. It's been a long time since I recognized 32. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. But he's a guy that looks like he could easily carry 220. Yeah. Into the future, and I'm sure as he starts to mature a little bit more here, like most of these hog players, they're going to put on some weight and size. Yeah, first ever Arkansas player named SEC Rookie of the Year, Freshman of the Year, second team all conference. And the Mariners thought a lot of him, used a 36th round pick on him last June, but uh, he was pretty committed to come to college. And uh, chances are when he is draft eligible again in two years in 2020, his name will be on a lot of draft boards once again. O2 pitch misses outside, one and two. Action continues in both bullpens, and again, we don't expect to see Blaine Knight come out to pitch the ninth. 
He has exceeded 100 pitches. He has gone longer than he has all year. And if his day is done, he has done all that could have been asked of him. That's Cody Scroggins, sophomore right-hander, staying loose out in the Razorbacks bullpen. High fly lifted deep to left field. That could go and is gone. Opposite field power once again. Heston Kerstad with his 13th of the year. Second of the day. Relentless. This offense just keeps coming after you and after you. We talked about his pull power. You mentioned the ball he hit over that right center field scoreboard. Well, we said he's got oppo power too. Again, he shows it to you. This one a little bit further than the last one. Over the left field wall, over the bullpen, and he picks up his second home run. And so now what he has done is tied Casey Martin for the team lead with 13 home runs this year. And that also ties Zach Cox from 2009 with the all-time single season freshman record in Arkansas history. First pitch swinging, Hunter Wilson with an opposite field base hit. Wilson with his first plate appearance after coming on as a pinch runner in the seventh inning. Well, how about that free and easy swing of Heston Kerstad? It's certainly free and easy, and it's extended, too, and he uses that length at 6'3 to be able to drive the ball the opposite way. You know, I like Hunter Wilson down at first base. Just got that base knock, came in there to pinch run. I noticed him yesterday. I would you ask these players, he's kind of a leader, you know, one of those mutters for you. He was given uh, down at the third base bag, he was he was really giving Martin a hard time during warm-ups or practice. Uh -huh. He was the long throw over to first base. He was telling Martin, you can't do what I can do. He's just <laughs> that motivational type guy. There's Wilson leading at first. Fletcher swings and misses. Fletcher's one for three. He's walked and singled. Nine runs on 13 hits for this potent Arkansas offense that has put up some of the biggest numbers in the entire country all year. One and two. Townsend comes set, and the one-two pitch. Grounded right side, and it sneaks through. Wilson heads for third, and he beats the throw, which gets away, goes into the dugout, and Wilson can walk on home. That'll be a throwing error on Trevor McCutcheon, allowing Wilson to score and make it 10 to Arkansas. Now give credit to Wilson for his hustle. That ball into right field. He was thinking third the entire time. He's rounding second here. And they charged in. Hunt McCutcheon with a good arm out in right field. Made the play a little bit closer there, but Hernandez came off the bag, and Wilson never stopped as he's heading to third. And I think I think he's a fan favorite. The way they reacted with him scoring again is here's the emotion I like with that kid. And we'll have another pitching change as the lead grows to eight for Arkansas. Back to Baum Stadium right after this.
You are watching the 2018 NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Logan Michaels becomes the fifth pitcher of the ball game for Oral Roberts University. The right-hander comes in with his club trailing 10 to 2. Now Michaels, one of those guys just trying to finish this thing out right now for Oral Roberts. The lead on the board 10-2. They just want to kind of get through this inning here, try to save as many pitches as possible and come back tomorrow and see if they can't fight their way through, assuming that they're not going to put any runs on the board or enough in the ninth to send this thing to extra innings. Well, the uh, task has been a difficult one as Carson Shaddy comes to the plate. He has one of four Arkansas home runs today. This is the third most prolific home run hitting team in the country. So you give them four today in what they call the Baum Squad, B-A-U-M, here at Baum Stadium. Arkansas now has 88 home runs on the year, third only to Tennessee Tech and Clemson coming into play today. And the first pitch doesn't even come close. It drills Shaddy between the two and the zero on his back. Now, not what you want to see for any of your players to take one in the back of the arm. Fortunately, it hit him in a big muscle and doesn't catch an elbow or something like that. That's the last thing you want to see. Yeah, I didn't catch him nearly as far back as I thought, but uh, still in a good spot, relatively speaking. So now runners on the corners. Last year, Arkansas led the SEC with 83 home runs. And with the 88 today, they uh, continue to show that they can hit the ball out of the ballpark as well as pretty much anybody in the country, except for, of course, Tennessee Tech. I mean, the offensive numbers those <laughs> folks put up are off the charts. That's been a big part of the SEC this year as Jared Gates pops it up on the infield. Florida, Kentucky also among the national leaders in home runs. Ball not deep enough at all as Nick Rotola makes the catch in shallow center. Fletcher bluff, but he stays at third. Rotola came in there. I'm not sure if he didn't think there was three outs there. He actually looked like he take, took a step or two toward the first base dugout. <laughs> Wait a minute. Got to get back here and get the third out. Did you catch the end of regulation in last night's first game of the NBA Finals? I did. Where J.R. Smith yes. lost track of time Ooh. and score, even though he lied about it in the post-game press conference. <laughs> we could all read his lips to say yeah. what he really thought. All competitors at all levels at times can lose track. No question. And I thought LeBron James was going to lose his mind. Yeah. But he maintained his composure at first. He just said, okay, all right, let's forget about it. We got overtime, and that didn't work out too well for him. No. Grant Cook, fly to center. Nice job after coming into the ballgame by Logan Michaels to get the final two outs. But the damage has been done. Heston Kerstad, the outstanding freshman from Amarillo, Texas, with his second home run of the day. All Razorbacks, they lead it 10 to 2. Lots to cheer about for the fans in Arkansas colors. 10 to the scores. We head to the top of the ninth inning in this first game of our Fayetteville Regional. And the work is done this afternoon for Blaine Knight. Except for a couple of solo home runs given up, he was outstanding, John. It's just a tremendous afternoon for him. Eight innings that he pitched in that, you know, he just faced 29 batters, got the 24 out. So just five over the minimum for him. And that was an efficient day for him. And you could see those numbers. Ties a career high with those eight innings. Just two Ks on the day, but uh, nobody really hit the ball hard beside those two home runs, two solo home runs. It really didn't cost him a whole lot. And you can see the smile on his face. Happy that his day is over. And so Cody Scroggins will come into the game. Richard sophomore right-hander who came back from Tommy John surgery in 2017 to full health this spring as he has transitioned from being recruited as an infielder to now being a pitcher, giving an opportunity to pitch 
in a regional and try and close out a victory. And a good opportunity for him to be able to do that and very comfortable with a 10 to 2 lead. So he just wants to go in here, throw strikes and uh, let his defense play behind him and see if they can't wrap this thing up and get some rest for the next day. And we have a change behind the plate as well. Casey Opitz, number 12, a freshman, has replaced Cook. So a new battery as Cody Scroggins stares in. Heart of the order due up here for Oral Roberts. Three, four, and five. Cummings, Henson, and Pace. Scroggins, 93 mile an hour fastball misses. It's one and one. Scroggins' last appearance came on May 18th in Athens at number 13, Georgia. Pitched an inning, gave up a couple of earned runs, walked a couple of batters. And command has been an issue for him in this his redshirt sophomore year. Nine walks in only nine and two-third innings. But as you mentioned, John, a uh, low leverage situation here. Chance to get the last three outs of a ball game up eight. Good strikeout numbers for him, so he's got the ability. I'm talking 93, 94 miles an hour, so just throw strikes. Nice looking breaking ball. When you can combine that with 93, 94, you're going to miss some bats. Can see why the uh, coaching staff and Dave Van Horn said, you know what, son? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not going to be an infielder anymore. We're going to put you on the mound. <laughs> We see that with many guys, two-way players. We talked with Dallas Baptist coach yesterday in regards to some of those changes and decisions on when you bring guys in as a two-way player, when you make that move, or do they make that move by themselves, that decision. Strike one to Spencer Henson. And with any pitcher, if you can throw strike one, mm -hmm. you can be successful. Getting ahead's key, that's for sure. We saw that all day long by Blaine Knight. He was able to get ahead and stay ahead of the hitters. Yeah, Blaine Knight's final line, eight innings, three hits, two runs, both earned, both on the solo home runs, one walk and one strikeout. And you know this uh, Arkansas defense, we haven't talked about it, is among the best in the SEC. They uh, have turned 55 double plays, didn't have any today, but he understands, let the guys behind me do what they do with the leather. There's your young right-hander. Well, if it goes according to plan, you know, Arkansas is the number five national seed. If it can survive this regional, would host the super regional round right here at Baum Stadium. Perfect world for the Razorbacks. He'd be here a week from today doing the same thing. Very quickly, two away as Henson is retired. And that'll bring up Andrew Pace. 0 for 2, reached on a hit by pitch back in the fourth inning. That ball ripped into right. That extends the ball game on a clean single by Andrew Pace. Pace with a Hard knock into right field that time. Scroggins doing a good job throwing that slider up there. Got the lefty and Pace able to yank that by the first baseman Gates as he dives and doesn't able to come, isn't able to come up with it. You know, still alive here. Or Roberts battling to the last out. Yeah, 
Ritola stands in. He had a bunt single in the second. The Scroggins pitch called strike with the breaking ball. It's nothing in one. That ball's drilled down the left field line. It gets down. And Oral Roberts has runners on second and third on the double by Nick Rotola. Rotola, one of the guys we highlighted at the very top of the program and his ability to hit the ball coming in really hot in his last five games. Well, he's staying that way, swinging the bat well. I've been impressed with Oral Roberts' ability to put the ball in play. As we said, Knight on the mound has had a fantastic day. A couple big home runs, that was it. But Will Roberts were hitting the ball. They just couldn't find the right spot to hit it. Well, the man at the plate has known where to put it. Riley Kaiser has hit a couple of balls over the fence and left. First time in his college career he has had two home runs in a game. Does he have a third in him? Arkansas is yet to retire this young man. He also walked his first time up, and the pitch from Scroggins misses low. Kaiser's a redshirt sophomore from the state of Oklahoma. This year's Summit League Newcomer of the Year. Breaking ball called strike one and one. That's a good pitch. That slider pitch takes something off of it. Got that fastball sits there at 94 miles an hour, 93, and then comes back with that cutter slash breaking ball. Runner at third is pace out at second Rotola. The one one gets away from the catcher for a moment. Hope it's able to retrieve it. Now the 2 1 from Scroggins. Misses up. Three balls and a strike. No activity in the Razorbacks bullpen. And you know Dave Van Horn wants Scroggins in the worst sort of way to close this thing out and not have to use anybody else out of that pen. He lost him. Kaiser's been aboard all four times. Two home runs, two walks, and the bases are full of Golden Eagles for Trevor McCutcheon. And with that, we see some stirring in the Razorbacks' bullpen. Just in case. Let's just play catch down here. McCutcheon 0 for 3. Takes a called strike. Jake Rindel, the junior from right here in Fayetteville, just getting loose out in the bullpen. They still lead by two grand slams. I mean, even if they get a home run here, they're still up four. Foul at the plate, nothing in two. And so once again, the near capacity crowd here at Baum Stadium on its feet looking for this final strike.
Can McCutcheon keep the game going? Hot smash fielded by Shaddy. He steps on the bag at second, and that ends the ball game. Arkansas behind the brilliant pitching of its ace right-hander, Blaine Knight, and the power hitting of freshman Heston Kerstad, knock off Oral Roberts 10 to two. An impressive outing for Knight as you talked about here, and see the 18th win in opening round games, and we said 93% of the time you win it, you can go on to win the regional, and it's a great start for this Arkansas offense and the pitching effort that they got on the mound today. Fans, the first pitch for our next team. 